Hey, and we're here. Folks, mostly football. We're back. In the midst, actually probably toward the end of former President Donald Trump's big announcement tonight. If you couldn't guess it before when he said there was going to be a big announcement, you guessed it now. That's right. Nate, what do you think he announced? His, his run for presidency in 2020. I thought it would have been hilarious if he did all this to announce that he wasn't running for president. That would have been a great switcheroo. But nope, he's running. Here we Mar-a-Lago again. Jesus. We got that. We got the tragic uh, news coming out of the UVA. Uh, that unfortunately, we have to talk about right after this nonsense of Donald Trump. Um, Dave Chappelle was on SNL recently, hosted, and boy, that was uh, had people anxious. Um, we've got a couple coaching awards to talk about the MLB, Cooper Cup, injury news. What's happening between the District of Columbia and Dan Snyder now? Also, <laughs> the John Watson is practicing? Question mark? All that and more on uh, tonight's episode of Mostly Football. Dude, this speech, which I'm watching on Newsmax, that's right. Round of applause for Newsmax. Thank you. I'll be watching OAN later. Remember when uh, Chuba Hubbard wasn't going to play at Oklahoma State because Mike Gundy or whatever, the coach was wearing an OAN shirt? Mm hmm. That was something. Jesus. Jesus. Well, you, you can't even wear a shirt these days of a news outlet. Nope. You know? It's Can you post links to movies you didn't create anymore? Can't even okay. post movies, links to movies that are available on Amazon. <laughs> but Amazon still broadcasts football games. So. Oh, yeah, you can make money off that. You can make money off, you know, whatever. You can make money off Kyrie sending all those people your way. <laughs> hey, right? But, yes, we do have the Don right now. He announced that it is 9.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right now. Um, the announcement was supposed to start at 9 p.m. He officially made the declaration of running for president at 9.24 p.m. I did mark the time as he did it. Um, I say that because he did his typical start off trashing Joe Biden, uh, talking about how awesome his victories were in the midterms. He's like, they're going to talk about how we lost 100 some odd lot races, but we won like 20 of them. No. <laughs> Uh, that might be in reverse. I don't know. But yeah, anyways, we know how it played out. I mean, the major ones, like you said, didn't get Dr. Strange in office. The, uh, <laughs> the uh, you know, uh, Carrie, uh, Carrie Lake. Yeah, I heard about the Arizona. I'm like, how the hell did this lady? Well, you know, they finally managed to get all the, <laughs> the count after uh, some printers. They didn't have the right ink or something in Maricopa County. Oh, but... oh that's well, that's convenient. Yeah. But now, you know, they got the ink, they got the printers all loaded up, and apparently enough votes right, came in for shit. for a woman who wasn't willing to debate. I'm just saying. Dude, they got to find a better way to do votes. <laughs> they got to find a better way to do it out in Arizona. But Katie Hobbs is officially governor. Um, John Fetterman wins in PA. Those were the biggies in Nevada. It looked mm-hmm. like Adam Waxalt, that's a great name, was in the lead and then... Cortez Mastro, man, I'm really in the know this political season. Uh, Cortez Mastro ends up pulling it out at the end, so Nevada goes blue, and boy, we've got a blue Senate, and we've got a red house. It's going to be interesting these next two years. And now we've got Trump officially making his declaration. Will Ron DeSantis, a.k.a. Ron DeSanctimonious, according to the Don himself, run against Donald Trump? We shall see. Will he be his running mate? I doubt it. CNN is fit to pull out all old Donald Trump news articles they had, and they're gonna run that shit for the next two years about how bad he is and all the collusion shit. They gonna this is this is gonna be stupid. I'm still waiting for the P tape. I pre-ordered it. Jesus Christ! This Never happened. Dumb. But you know, I'm I, I'm saying, like I told you before the show, I think I think he's doing this just to get DeSantis over. To be honest, I, I think I think. His thing wow, is yeah. Nate has a Nate has a he thinks Trump is playing like 4D chess here. 
Yeah, I, I believe it. I, I do believe it. When you get people to believe, this is the thing. People, people will say this, anything but Trump. Okay. So if DeSantis runs, you're you're gonna it's it's you're gonna pick Trump or you're gonna go to DeSantis because obviously everyone's done with Joe Biden ass. <laughs> These prices are too goddamn high. Everyone's done with that old bastard. They're ready for him to go. His own constituents are like, yeah, look, bro, you gotta go. Shit's too high. Y'all killing us. And they keep sending money to fucking Ukraine. Who are they gonna replace him with though? I don't know who I don't know who's gonna. I mean, Ain't nobody Kamala to, definitely is not going to win. No, there's nobody on the left that you could use to replace smoking Sleepy Joe. I mean, oh, I, I feel like real Democrats, again feel like, real Democrats like Bernie, but he's been screwed twice now. Right, they, they, they don't. The thing with Bernie is everyone understand like Bernie. He's not dumb. Okay, he's not going to buy into their bullshit. Like he has his mindset on how he wants to run things and he's gonna run it that way. And it don't it doesn't align with their it doesn't align with how they want to do things. So that he's he, he's done. Shouldn't be any millionaires or billionaires in this country. He's done. Bernie, he's, shut up. Okay. He, he just needs to sit his ass down and just stay where he's at, make all the money for the rest of his life. And because he he's not getting a chance. We can't have another elderly president, like an extremely elderly president. Excuse me. A white on top of that. And there's, this there's is not, the party of youth and diversity, and we still got yeah. old whites running the show. Because their constituents are stupid. They complain about how old white men are bad, but keep voting for old white men. But you know, ah. that's just that's just me. At the end of the day, they know how to play the game. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. As long as you know how to manipulate, that's all you need to do. But uh, yeah, I mean. I, that's... <laughs> This two-party system, I mean, it's really working out for us. Again, yet again, rest of the world, these are our best two we could possibly put forward, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Hey, you know what? They with the system, so that's all that matters. Gee, dang it. Man, I've been really diving into, like, the Maxwells. I did a whole bunch of Wikipedia today on the father, Robert, and, you know, that's, the sister. That, that's a rabbit hole I'm not willing to go down. How about this? <laughs> Speaking of uh, hitting close to home... Christine Maxwell currently works for uh, UT at Dallas. Who? Who? Christine Maxwell. Galene's one of her sisters. Who? Christine Maxwell. Uh-huh. Galene Maxwell's one of her oh, sisters. Oh, the lady from the... Ah, yeah, yeah. oh, got you. Well, she yeah, should she be has two sisters, twins, should... Isabel and Christine. And Christine currently is employed by the University of Texas at Dallas. All right, well, you need to go That's ahead. That's UT, right? Yeah, UTD. Huh. That sounds like an investigation should be conducted. Yeah, it's a, she's, a, she's, a, she's a whiz kid, apparently, with the old internet search engine. So I want to watch out for grab and waterboarding. Yeah. You know, Isabel, World Economic Forum stuff. Hey. I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> look into it. Maybe don't look into it. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, now they're all standing and cheering. Probably the YMCA is playing. I can't play the audio for you folks, but you get the picture. The thing is, okay, so like I said, Trump spent the first 20 minutes bashing everyone but himself. And then, you know, being like, I'm awesome. I'm also announcing my presidency. And then he was like, just now he's just dragging on to the most obscure shit. He's like, you know, actually, I went into North Korea and we had an agreement about how many avocados they could sell us. And they screwed up that whole deal. Yeah, it, it's 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 this part this part political shit. It's getting it's getting weird, and it's going to continue to get weird from this point out. Listen, be thankful you live in Georgia. The, who, we got to deal with this least, runoff least, shit for a whole another two months. Huh? I said, be thankful you don't live in Georgia because now we got to deal with this runoff shit for another two months <laughs> of YouTube ads. God <laughs> damn! Oh man, that's funny. That is but, hilarious. Speaking of which, ish political ish, like we mentioned, uh, Dave Chappelle here. I want to get to it because it is relevant. You know, he's I would call him a very influential figure in American society, especially for people our age, like the Chappelle, <clears throat> the Chappelle show. I mean, come on. 
Uh, but this is from the LA Times. Yeah. Dave Chappelle targets Kanye West, Donald Trump, and others on Saturday Night Live. Uh, by Greg Braxton, November 13th, 2022. Anxious speculation had been building all week ahead of Dave Chappelle's Saturday Night Live hosting gig. Since the return of the controversial comedian to the sketch comedy show was announced, NBC and executive producer Lauren Michaels faced criticism for giving Chappelle a spotlight in light of what they called transphobic comments on his Emmy-nominated 2021 special, The Closer. That's mm. that, That's... And the thing is, he he made sure he didn't offend anybody. He he made sure he offended the right people. That's the thing. Like he chose, he made sure he didn't offend that community because he he already knew. I'm like, you know what? Like I can't. I personally, if you if you believe something, say it. Mm-hmm. It's just that simple. Like there's no reason for you to play into the 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 hand. Like for me at this point, since what 2016. For comedians, it's been easy. Like being a comedian has been easy. All you gotta do is talk about Donald Trump. Talk about how racist the Republicans are and this and that and that. And then guess what? That's a whole set. And people laugh at that if you go to the right places. If you go to the right place, you I mean you look at people like uh not Amy Schumer. What's that other one lady? Uh Chelsea Handler. Mm. She's horrible, she's not funny whatsoever there was a time there was a time before done before 2016 she was funny funny how that happened to so many people then 2016 happened and then oh. she was no longer funny Man. along with a lot a, a load of other comedians a load of others a load of others there's a lot of them. jimmy was jimmy kimmel uh what's the other guy's name the hell there yeah him He's another one. Most famously, I mean, guy. Uh, what's his? What's the guy who who took over for Colbert? What's the guy's name? Trevor. Ah, Noah? Trevor Noah. He's not fucking. He used to be funny, but then 2016 happened, and he's no longer funny. Cause that's all he's talking about. Even he left the Daily Show now, so who knows what's up with that? Man, so it for me like comedy. Like I got for if I'm watch comedy, like you got I got to be quick. I got to be careful because I don't want to. Like I actually went to a, uh, I actually went to a comedy show after twenty in twenty seventeen. It was Afion Crockett, and I was extremely nervous. I was extremely nervous because I was like, I don't want to sit for through an entire set of Donald Trump's this, Donald Trump's that. But luckily, he only had like one Donald Trump joke, and then that was it. And then the rest of the set was fucking hilarious. So, it's like, I, if. If you can do it right, like political humor is fine. It's just when you like start playing for one team that it gets exactly. too cringe. Yeah, yeah, like if you if you if you're going at both parties, cool, because both parties are fucking retarded. Yeah, let's just be honest. <laughs> both parties are fucking retarded. But if you're just like, oh, like you you're taking the easy route. Like it doesn't. It don't take much to fucking write a Donald Trump joke. Like you can just YouTube some shit and. Try to make it funny if you have the right audience. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, it it after like I said after 2016, it just it, you got to be careful with the comedians. You got to be careful with the show because you don't know. Like my favorite comedians right now are uh, what's his name, Andrew Schultz. He's fucking hilarious. Flagrant. Yes. He, he is. He's extremely hilarious. What's the other guy's name? Uh, Akash. Who? His co his co host there, Akash, or yes. are you thinking of a different comedian? No, he's no, he's funny too. Didn't it? What's the other guy? Oh, yeah, I can't think of his name. Ball guy, Bill Murr. Ah, okay, yep. He he he's fucking old hilarious. Billy Freckles. <laughs> he he that he just don't give a shit. He just he's just gonna say what it needs to be said, and I enjoy that. That's very true. That's very true. Um, and th- this is what's hilarious too, dude. It's like. You so uh, reports here it says reports circulated that some SNL writers upset by his comments were refusing to work with him. Those reports were denied by Chappelle's representatives. Imagine being a writer on the least funny edition of SNL ever, ever. and refusing to work with one of the most iconic comedians. We're not talking about like Cosby controversy or you know we're talking about a guy who said something that you didn't interpret 
the way that you didn't like. I mean, this man, actually go back and watch the, the special. Don't just read tabloids. Don't just read you know what other people say about it. Actually go back and watch the special and then watch the follow-up and then watch the follow-up to the follow-up. This man has no hate in his heart for trans people. Uh, it's so stupid to think that at this point, but I mean, they, you have just, they don't words. like, they don't like mean words. Yeah, exactly. And these people were probably the same ones, you know, I'm sure they laughed in the same uh, monologue when he joked about Herschel Walker, but you know, yeah, they absolutely did. Uh, they, they absolutely did. Pulling out a paper from his black leather jacket, Chappelle read, I denounce anti-Semitism in all its forms, and I stand with my friends in the Jewish community. He then took a sharp poke at the rapper formerly known as Kanye West. I still love that, formerly known as, uh, who has come under fire for several anti-Semitic remarks. And that Kanye, he said with a mischievous grin, is how you buy yourself some time. <laughs> See, and that's, a, that, and that's the fucking thing that I don't get. Like, he, like, you kiss ass. Like, like, don't sit there and say, because his, his biggest claim to fame is, well, I walked away from the Chappelle show. I mean, yeah, you did, but you had to kiss a lot of ass to come back. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I don't know about this now. You're going to hate on Chappelle? Kiss a lot of ass to come back. A lot of ass. Mad. It's, it's just that simple. Okay. You, you, he, he, you, you see how much fire you came under when you made the the gay jokes and this and that you go to SNL a predominantly left show probably more than likely ran by Jewish people and like hmm let me kiss <laughs> people's ass no but he did that. no you gotta you gotta watch he definitely took shots he's like well you know if you look around Hollywood it's quite a coincidence you see all Jewish people like if you go to Missouri you see all black people I'm just like he did like uh, no, take you're your more shot, than welcome. I, you're more than welcome to. I personally disagree, and I think this man knows how to perfectly mm. tightrope the comedic line in between. And yes, like did he go on a show that leans left? Yes, but like he also got his shots in, and it's a cla- it's an iconic comedy show. I mean, I can't knock him for that. Like, I don't know. You're definitely. I'm not going to say you're wrong, but also. I have I disagree, sir. Respectfully, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just t- I'm just tired of every tired of all these people think they're pre- trying to preach the truth, but also kissing ass at the same time. Listen, if you're gonna talk about it, talk about it. Now, I really real. like and this article. Doesn't mention it as much as some others, but I really like what he had to say about Trump and what people don't get. And um, you know, definitely check out the video, but. He talked about how he lives in Ohio amongst the poor whites. And he's like, what people don't get is like he's he's an insider bashing the insiders from the outside. He's like, yeah, you can yell at me all day long about not showing you my taxes or messing fucking with the taxes. But it's like you wrote the tax code that allows me to fuck with it. So he's like, until you change it. So he's like, that's what people like. It's not necessarily that he's some also he's not a good guy like i don't think anyone i shouldn't say that okay most people i have to imagine don't think of trump as like the perfect candidate but he's a symbol of like throwing the establishment's hypocrisy back at them that's basically what what he does and that's what yeah and that's the and that's the thing that they don't like is that and not just that like their constituents don't like it because he's doing exactly what they are doing to everyone else like he's literally he basically said because dave Chappelle said he said he said the one thing i heard when donald trump said this is that he said i know the system is rigged because i use it yes yes so he's that was basically that was big he's basically telling you the system is rigged because i do it i know <laughs> it's rigged because i know the loopholes and that scares and the you hell out of mad at me because i use the loopholes that you created but, they, and that's what scares them. Like Ron DeSantis, you know, I I appreciate the fact that he stayed open during COVID. I appreciate all the um, the conferences that he held with doctors and discussing actual pros and cons, like being very reasonable and rational about the whole pandemic era. But I ultimately, like, he doesn't 
I don't think he scares the establishment in the way that Trump does because like I, at the end of the day, like he's a run of the mill politician, like Trump for better or for worse, like it scares the shit out of the establishment because he might say something and reveal something. And, and that's what, and I think that's why, I think that's why he became a racist. Yeah. I think that's why he became, that's why they had the collusion. I think that's because if you, if I, t- if I know this individual has dirt on me or he has, you know, he, he has a way to destroy what I got going. I got to keep him from opening his mouth. That's what I got to do. I got to continue to throw dirt on him until he shuts the fuck up. So that's what we, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the collusion. We're going to do Russia. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do false impeachments. So now instead of him talking about the loopholes and the bullshit that's going on, now he, only thing he's talking about is his innocence. We know he's innocent. But we don't need him. We don't need him to be sitting freely without putting bullshit on it. Well, the thing is, too, man, is like I've shared on my own Facebook page multiple pictures of Donald Trump hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein at parties with Jeffrey Epstein, you know, doing this, doing that. CNN, you know, MSNBC, they could be showing all these same pictures and videos with a convicted pedophile. And a uh, guy like that, a human sex trafficker, but they the don't want to because he has the same connections with the fucking people on their side of the fence with the Clintons and those people. And if, if you start talking about Trump's connection to Epstein, well, you might have to start digging into the Clinton's connection of Epstein and all these Democrats. And that's, you, that's eventually that's thing. where you learn he, that it's all the same party. Yep, exactly. He is, he is. He, he's the, the link that they can't get rid of because if they do anything to him, then questions are going to come out. This oh, and that. He's from Russia. He's racist. Why not just show him? Why not just show him with a convicted pedophile? You can't. Well, because he's also buddies with your friends. Yep, exactly. And you can't because then what's going to happen is you open a can of worms and now you got to dig. And then he's named because you can't because you can't doctor the shit because that's going to come out. And then you're going to look like an idiot at this point. So, And even, you know, uh, I'm watching this, dangerous to the establishment. Be watching this on any channel. Shame on Fox News. Shame on Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck today had Alan Dershowitz on talking about his innocence as Epstein's lawyer. And, all oh, I'm exonerated because uh, Virginia Guthrie, you know, we dismissed our lawsuits against each other. Screw that, dude. A guy who was Epstein's lawyer for that long, a guy who took that many flights, oh, a guy knows. who he knows. he knows too much. He was involved in too much. He knows too much. Like I'm, I don't excuse that, and I don't feel like Fox News or Glenn Beck is doing anyone any favors by you know trying to portray this man as some innocent victim. So yeah, screw that. Yeah. Anyone who thinks I'm on the right, you're wrong. Okay, <laughs> just because I bash the left and I hate the in this culture. But I'm just trying to get this out there. It's like, you know, you go into these echo chambers or, or chat groups and you say one thing about the left and it's like all of a sudden you're a conspiracy theorist, right wing nut. And it just drives you nuts. They just too they make it too easy for you. That's what it is. They make the the left makes it easy. Like they 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 would suck at poker. It just puts you like that. <laughs> they suck I, at poker. The you issue know? is you drive independence. To a to a different party when you won't hear what they have to say. Yep. I don't know. Absolutely. And, anyway, that's a whole lot of that's a whole lot of you know PT, whole lot of politics talk. Uh, we're we're twenty three minutes in. Let's make the switch here. <laughs> uh man, I hate to do it like this though. Damn, we got to talk about it because it definitely oh, the tragedy in, at UVA. Oh uh, yeah, I heard about that. That. That's unfortunate. That was extremely unfortunate. So this is on ESPN.com. Virginia coach Tony Elliott says football team beginning to heal um, from Mark Schlabach. So where were these kids at? Were they like at a party even, or something? I haven't dug into it too much, man. I Unfortunately, yeah, I haven't done the justice that it deserves. But. Like three, of the play, three of his players were shot, killed. Two others were wounded on a charter bus after students returned to campus. It feels like it's a nightmare. So wait, he was, were they getting, I guess they were getting off the bus. 
Damn. Junior receiver, South Carolina junior receiver. I, I don't know. It's just that's I, I did, and then I saw the update, but I didn't really pay too much attention to it until I actually saw until I actually heard. It. I think I heard it on radio. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, let's see what this uh, lovely woman with a very exposed shoulder has to say. The suspect is a former football walk-on, Christopher Darnell Jones, who was apprehended Damn. Monday after a manhunt. Today, Virginia Jealousy or what? Carla Williams and Coach Tony Ellis speaking for the first time since CTE, the maybe? Who knows? Yeah, it feels like it's a nightmare, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm ready for somebody. This is uh, Virginia head coach Tony Elliott. Um, and say that this didn't happen. Um, you prepare for this job. There's no there's no chapter on this. Showing a picture of Devin Chandler. And so Lavelle I'm Davis. Trying to figure out step by step. And Deshaun Perry. How to be strong for these young men. The first meeting was really, really tough. You know, really, really, really tough. Today was much better. It so shocking that you just Carla Williams, Virginia Athletic Director, speaking. And and so that's what we've spent. That's where we have spent our energy. That's where we've spent our time. And um, and I think that's what we. Need to she probably did it at this point with the sequence of events and the timing. I've just been focusing on uh, loving these players, uh, consoling the families, uh, trying to to make sure that 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 there's no ripple effect with the guys on the team because again, got a something that tribute set up to the players at UVA is, is prepared showing right now until you're you're inside of it. So you have a, a football team that is that is grieving, that is hurt. But this is also very well, candlelight vigil. Looks like here the situation is is bigger than football, and it transcends uh, football. In due time, we'll collaborate on on the path going forward in terms of on the field play. You could hear the anguish in his voice, the pain on his face. As we're joined now by Mark Schleyball, who's joining us from Charlottesville. And Mark, she is we mentioned earlier stunning. that fourth player, running back Mike Hollins. What's the update on his status? Well, Hollins had a second surgery this morning. I hate to objectify the, uh, medical center. He was it. shot in the back. A bullet, oh. bullet was lodged in his stomach. He had emergency surgery uh, late Sunday night to remove the bullet. Doctors this is Mark Schlaubach here, editor of the story we just wrote. To uh, Read. examine whether or not he had any internal injuries. I talked to a Author. Hollins family spokesman earlier today. He told me the surgery went well. Doctors expect him to make a full recovery two other students including running middle, back mike collins wounded wounded and in stable condition from baton rouge on monday he could three talk virginia football players bay. killed he wanted to tell us he communicated shooting. with her and he asked for a notepad and wrote down how are my teammates man yeah so three dudes killed by a former teammate yep that's really it sounds like that's that that just makes no sense that literally make it that's just senseless does it list uh they didn't mention a motive at all who knows what the motive could have been like yeah it might have been ct does weird things to you but that shit here it, it's 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 just dumb i mean it, it, there's not really much you can do here he had been arrested without incident the day before. He was being yeah. held without bail on three felony charges of second-degree murder and firearm use in the commission of... Are you fucking kidding me, dude? What? So this guy... Oh, wait, never mind. Am I reading this wrong? I don't think so. Are you? Trump was transferred on Tuesday where he'd been arrested without incident. Okay, so he was arrested for that. He's oh, being held duty. without bail. Okay. I thought he was already, I thought he was like, had been in and out, like they had already arrested him and then he was released. And, no, that thing, okay. so that's, yeah, no. But, I don't know. It's just, it's, it gets to a point where it's just like, it, you just get numb to it at this point. Jones was a walk-on, had a pre-existing lower body injury when he arrived on campus to former Cavaliers, according to former Cavaliers coach Bronco Mendenhall, unable to practice or play in a game. 
She almost left the team the next semester. Maybe there was a disagreement somewhere. Mendon Hall, who coached the Cavaliers from 16 to 21, didn't recall Jones having any disciplinary issues in his short time with the team. It doesn't make sense to me, Mendon Hall said. I know he remained a UVA student, but I don't, I don't have any other understanding of it. He was a classmate of these guys, and there were other players in the same class, so I just don't understand it. I wish I could provide more insight, but his time with the program was so short and so long ago. There was never anything that came across my desk with any discipline or behavior issues. And with being hurt the whole time, he wasn't really integrated into the program in that one semester. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to sound like a conspiracy nut. And the government's hiding something. <laughs> these, things only happen, these things only happen when they're, when they're trying to do shit. I hate that it, it comes to that. You know, because false this kid flags had are no issues. Thing. You're telling me this is like the whole Deshaun Watson thing. Okay. You're telling me a kid who no behavioral issues, no disciplinary issues. He was on the team in 2018, never got to play, leaves the team, stayed in school, was a classmate of these players, amongst other players. Nothing. And out of nowhere, he snaps and kills three of them and injures three more? Nah. I don't believe in coincidences. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. I mean, it's very possible that this kid no. was Next. associated with players, oh, kind of got teased, right, for his short time on the team. I, he would hang around, you know, certain groups, and they'd be like, hey, I remember, died. hey, it's broke leg over. Remember broke leg over here? I you know, so. it. I doubt it. I, I don't I don't think it could I, be I, a bullying I, thing. It's possible. I, I don't I, I don't I, I just I, I don't know. I don't I don't see it. Like I, I just I don't I don't see it. Got TJ in the know. house. Nate believes in big foreheads. You goddamn right, we all do. I don't I don't I don't believe big I just, forehead, I just, long necks in the house. I, honestly I, I, I just, do what we can I don't know. Right? Like for me it's just like for him to just snap like that, it, it just it's it's weird. It's it's weird for me. Especially. It's, it's 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 weird for me. People don't just snap like that overnight. Well, you know, could have built up over time. I it, I appreciate that you have that opinion because I'm not ruling it out. But I I think it's I would lean toward. You think he's been a young bullied? a young man with mental health issues? Yeah, well, I don't know. Hopefully they find out. Hope, hope they probably won't find out a reason. Well, hopefully he says something. Who knows? I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully they they do a better job than you know finding out what happened in Las Vegas with those Route ninety one shooting victims because they're still waiting for compensation, as far as I know. Uh, yeah. That was a whole yeah whatever. <laughs> Who needs to go down the whole Las Vegas shooter route, yeah, right? That totally that, happened. That, that that was that again. That's a long rabbit hole to go down. I'm not doing that here on mostly football just to get a few tinfoil hat fans. We yeah. like our sports fans here. And seriously, though, um, to these players and their families, uh, thoughts and prayers for sure. Fucking God damn it, dude. And I hate that it gets uh, utilized as a political this is what football, happened. as they say. Yeah, that's good. It's going to get used as some, some way. That's some what pisses trick. me off the most, dude. Somebody's going to be like, see, this is why nobody should have guns. Yep. This is actually what's going to happen. It's, you know it's going to start. <clears throat> Making the switch to MLB, we do have some good news, believe it or not, on this show. Um, two very experienced coaches, managers, I should say. Uh, Terry Franconia was named AL Manager of the Year for the third time after leading the Young Guardians to the AL Central title. Buck Showalter made history after his first season with the Mets, becoming the first skipper to win Manager of the Year award with four different teams. How about that? Uh, I still hate their name, the Guardians. I, st- I hate that. that. That irritates me, the Cleveland Guardians. What the fuck? They're guarding Cleveland. Right, go on. They're guarding L's. They're guarding. 
I just the thing is like it came on the heels also of Commanders. Like, it's what just, book are we reading? It's like Guardians and Commanders comes to mind. Like, what the fuck? Are we does, because they think like if you L. Ron if you Hubbard, were, like, well, goddamn, attract people, give them cool names. There was a lot of cool names that the the Washington football team could have chose, but they chose the fucking Commanders. And then the colors, you had an opportunity re- to reinvent this fucking team. And you decided we're going to name ourselves the commanders. We're going to keep these dumbass colors. And then what? Everyone's going to forget about the Redskins scandals? No. Like you had a chance to reinvent this team. New colors, new uniforms, new helmets, everything. And Dan Snyder as un fucking creative as he is he was like hmm, i like the commanders and i like these ugly colors so that's what we're going to stick with like, i don't even mind the colors but everything is just so basic the color like, scheme is awful everything sucks like they, just, i think they probably have the worst color scheme in just fucking a, just, football just right a now. plain just a w like that's the best you could do yeah like all you, those millions and <laughs> fucking dollars and billions yeah, of dollars you got. I mean, at least Cle- I mean, yes, Cleveland got the orange. Uh, Cleveland has the just the orange helmet, but fuck, they got a mascot. Okay, they, they got something. They got history. You know, you could you had a chance to reinvent this team, and now you now the thing is you have a shitty team with shitty name, shitty colors, oh. and more scandals. Everything's shitty about that team. Everything's shitty about this team. Yeah, and they yeah. just beat my team. I don't want to talk about that just yet, but it's, my it, God. It, it, there's, and, there's lights on. You back. know what? While we're on the subject, uh, props to those guys, but shit, we're talking about them. Might as well bring it up. It's time for Dan Schneider to go. Dan Schneider has to go. This is from the official. Office of the Attorney General for the District of Columbia page, the AOG.DC.GOV, folks. I'm not fucking around with my sources. They are going to win this. They're going to win this. AG Racine sues Washington Commanders Dan Snyder, NFL, and NFL Commissioner Goodell for receiving DC fans, for deceiving, not receiving, for deceiving DC fans for financial gain. What, deceiving them from what? So this here from the most official government page we've ever used on mostly football. Uh, lawsuit stands up for DC consumers who were lied to about investigation into commander's toxic workplace and seeks accountability and penalties. Oh yeah. Okay. Attorney general Carl a Racine today announced a new lawsuit against the Washington commanders, team owner, Dan Snyder, the NFL national football league, and NFL Commissioner Roger, Roger, Roger Goodell for colluding to deceive <laughs> district residents, commanders, core fans about an investigation into toxic workplace, workplace culture and allegations of sexual assault to maintain a strong fan base and increase profits. Oof. Ah, man. This whole, thing, this whole thing with Dan Schneider just, it, it's, it's atrocious. And it's time for him to sell his team. It, it, he got to pull a Donald Sterling and sell a team and peace the fuck out and just be never heard from again because he he's making this shit bad. Like he, I would, it, I would, it, it's, it has to suck to be a player for right now for the commanders. It, it really, really has to. So basically this lawsuit is saying that they weren't, Genuine about their investigation into their own, you know, of course, which of course, which of course, (laughs) but it's like, you know, I feel like because Snyder, I guess, through the team, said something about maybe they should focus less on me and more about crime in DC, which resulted in Brian Robinson getting shot. And boy, that didn't go over well. And they immediately apologized for that and had to walk that back. And this whole thing's just that. Because this whole thing's a big measuring contest gone wrong, you know? Did you hear hear about any of that? Yes. I mean, millionaires. 
I do people who wear ties you, every day how do you, how do are trying to dunk on each other. How do you open your mouth to say something that asinine and and then have to backtrack it because you realize how stupid it sounded? Like, dude, there's been multiple reports of toxic culture in your organization. You can't point the finger at something that happened this year. This is some shit that happened years ago. Like, dude, come on. And Brian Robinson doesn't want that. Brian Robinson doesn't want you to be like, well, well, my my player got shot, so maybe uh, focus on that. Bro, they caught the guy who shot him. Now they're going to deal with your ass again. This, he's an idiot. Don't Dan you, Schneider's an idiot. Don't you use me, you asshole. Team. If I was a player, I'm not playing for this man. There's too much shit going on. Like, how do you, how do you consciously, as a fan, deal with this like as a i wish we i wish i knew a commander's fan like how do you mentally deal with this i know a commander's fan i'm related to a commander's fan you should ask them how they deal with this shit day to day because if this is my team i'm i'm cutting ties i'm cutting ties all together i don't believe there are any commander's fans <laughs> i think there are grandfathered in redskins fans <laughs> Who are loyal, but there are no commanders fans. <laughs> they just they, like as far as like you know, EST 2021 <laughs> commanders fans. So they're 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 the redskin fans. They're yeah, original. I mean the decisions made. <laughs> you can't <laughs> the countless quarterbacks, the coaches in and out, the bad defenses, the bad defense. I mean the everything, everything. The, the everything. It's still bad. It's still not good. It's still awful. You got all those first round draft picks, and you can't do shit. Hell, was it that Chase Young is gonna play his first game next week? This team sucks. They're awful from top to bottom. I mean, yeah. Ron Rivera, I do respect as a coach. Jack Del Rio, I do respect as a coach. So those two, you know, um, hey, you good to the association, but. If you look at if you look at society, Turner. you're guilty by association. It's just it's literally just that simple. <laughs> it's it it's bad. Like it's like you. I don't I don't know. Like how consciously as a player, like you hear all the shit that's going on. You see everything that's going on. Like how do you say, I want to play for this guy? I guess because he ain't said nothing racial yet, right? The Jets are still good for sure. Um. As long as he don't say nothing racist, you're fine. You can play for, you know, and that's the, that's the thing with the league. As long as, as long as there's nothing racial going on or there's nothing that's taking attention from the national anthem or whatever, it, it's okay. You know, a guy could, you know, be accused of sexually sexual misconduct with 26 different women, but, hey, we're going to give him 11 games. A guy bets on his team and he gets a full year, so. Oh, you know, they, you know, the NFL, the NFL doesn't know what they want to do. They, they don't know. They don't know the L's from the ass from the elbow. So, you know, an owner gets happy endings. He gets a few yeah. draft strips. There's, whole, there's owners who are getting happy endings. The quarterback gets happy endings. He gets suspended for half the year. Right. Exactly. You know, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's just, you, you don't know what the, the NFL is so inconsistent. They're inconsistent with their, their punishments. They're inconsistent with the calls. They're inconsistent with every fucking thing. And they're wondering why people don't want to fucking deal with them. You should think inconsistent. And like, the, it you, goes deep, like, with, at least for me. You know, I'm sure there are a bunch of guys who are just plain douchebags who are like, oh, Sarah Thomas, get women out of the NFL. I'm sure there's that. There, there truly is toxic masculinity, and those guys can go fuck themselves. But right. for me, and I'm sure you're the same way, like, we just understand hypocrisy. Like, we see... It's not that hard. We see Ray Rice get a one-game suspension until the video comes out, and then yeah, he gets it. and then he gets full game. Oh. Oh. Uh, and now, all of a sudden, we want to hire, you well, know, not even that. I mean, referees and things like that. Like, here's my question. Here's my question. And to TJ, oh, yeah. yes. TJ brings up I mean, the John Gruden. I mean, email, my yes, definitely. So here, here's my question. So Ray Rice 
damn near knocks his fucking girlfriend's head off her shoulders. Yes. In in one of the more okay, I'm gonna say this, and a lot of people aren't gonna like it. In one of the more impressive punches I've ever seen in my life, as far as torque and technique, that punch was damn near flawless. But go ahead. <laughs> so, Kareem Hunt was seen kicking a woman <laughs> on video, but yet I, I think, think you he, mean I, tap on the booty. With his I think foot. he only had what six. He was like a couple game suspension, and he's he still in the league. Little big bite the dog. Ah, that's not exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He fights dogs and he gets two years. What the fuck? So my 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 question is is like the consistency. So there's punishments for some, but not punishments for all. Colin Kaepernick can take a knee and do I condone anything that he did? No. He took advantage because he was a bum ass quarterback and he needed attention. That's just have the, the have the owners or not the owners, have has anyone associated with the Packers or has the has Roger Goodell had to come out and denounce Brett Favre? Has anyone had to go to sensitivity training because of what Brett Favre did? Not a single solitary person. Nothing. Nobody did not. Brett Favre is not losing anything from the Hall of Fame or his his the Ring of Honor for Green Bay Packers. So, oh, but you know, fuck T- fuck To because you know he was hard to work with. It, exactly. So it's it's inconsistent. And the thing is, this is where I believe Man, TJ Roger, just keeps coming at that forehead, dude. He's a hater. This is this is where I come in. I, I believe Roger Goodell needs to be fired. It's time for. Like, look what Adam Silver did with the league, with the NBA. Once, you know, the other guy was done, Adam Silver came in and he set a standard. Like, that's just be honest. I think it's time for Roger Goodell to get the fuck up out of there because he's doing nothing but killing the game. He's been killing the game since they started this whole don't hit the quarterback shit. So I think it's time. I think it's time for a change for a commissioner, to be honest. Probably in probably in both leagues. I mean, my God, which both league? You don't like Adam Silver? Not if he's behind all this fucking Kyrie needs to bend the knee that, shit. That that that's that. Well, he's Jewish himself, so <laughs> so you got it. And now, now that LeBron has kind of come out in defense of Kyrie, they got a real. Oh, he, def- oh, he defended. Him, he defended him finally because the first he, time he talked about his bitch ass, he tucked his tail and ran like he did the first time. He 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 played well. He said, "Listen, you can't you can't be anti-Semitic. I don't condone that. Bitch but ass. but these these stipulations, these requirements are a little overboard." So he okay. So he didn't defend Kyrie. He's just saying the punishment is excessive. He's still that's a bitch. Kind ass. of defending. He's still a best not defending. He's a bitch ass. He's a bitch ass. You're a I bitch mean, ass. And you're you're a bitch ass because the Jewish people have been they've been butt fucking you for a while, Mister LeBron. That's how you got that dumbass show on HBO Max, the fucking barbershop. Who the fuck cares? Y'all don't yeah. talk about nothing important anyway. I'm you finding out in rich real ass people time that about Nate boys. is a black Hebrew Israelite. What? I'm finding out in real time that Nate is a black Hebrew Israelite. No, it's just fuck that. I'm like, finding no. out in real time that Nate has been watching Louis Farrakhan. On YouTube like, all day, every day. Like my my problem is this: is you can say whatever you want about white people, you can say whatever you want about Asian people, you can say whatever you want about black people. The moment you talk about those fucking Jewish people, all of a sudden, oh my God, it's anti-Semitic. It's a problem. No, go fuck yourself. Listen, yeah. don't make me say what I really want to say because if I say what I really wanted to say. Because now I'm starting to understand why a certain someone did a certain certain thing back in a certain time era. So I don't want to mention that, but I'm starting to understand why he did it. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Listen. I didn't say any names, but I understand. This is 49 minutes in is a perfect place to praise the final solution. <laughs> 49 minutes into a podcast is the perfect place to say, you know what? Maybe Hitler was honest about this. 
Hey, I didn't say it. You said it. I didn't say it. Jesus Christ. Say it. You said it. Dude, 49 minutes saying, into a podcast. I'm just saying I understand at this, this point. This is the perfect place to say, you know what? I've read my struggle, and I really like what he had to say, <laughs> a.k.a. Mein Kampf. Hey, I'm starting to understand. Like, I really do. Like, it's you, you can say whatever you want about everybody else, but the moment you talk about a Jewish person, is a big deal. It's a problem. Hey, Chappelle said. whatever they want to say about us. Chappelle said. Chappelle said. If you got a bunch of Italians, it's called the mob. You get a bunch of blacks, it's called the gang. But you get a bunch of Jews, it's called anti-Semitic. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. I we understand. Definitely canceled. <laughs> By the way, I've been wanting to know this ever since autocorrect became a thing. Is canceled with one L or two? I, I swear I think it was two. I swear it was two L's. I always used to think it was two, but I autocorrect. God, it was two L's. There's no way it's not. I, I'm pretty sure it has two L's, but I don't think Google can spell correctly. Well, one L, two L, three L's. We're getting all those L's, no matter what. I'm just saying, you know. I'm just, I, I'm just saying. I'm not saying he was right. I'm not saying he was right. I'm just saying I understand. This is the plot twist that. The white men in America have been waiting for for decades now is black men being like, you know what? Maybe Hitler was out of something. <laughs> I'm not saying again. I've never said it was right. Oh shit! Just in time, Rapid Dave joined TJ and uh, <laughs> here here Nate's saying. take on uh, old Adolf making a comeback. <laughs> I never say any names, but I dig it. I just do. Because I'm this new Carlos Mencilia. Imagine that. He said, Wow, well, I walked into something in, interesting conversation. You did. <laughs> Nate is officially a member of the Black Hebrew Israelites. We're finding out the blacks were the original Jews. <laughs> and Kanye and Kyrie, they're not alone. <laughs> Nate, I, just uh, think, I believe you have that Amazon link posted in your uh, bio, correct? I just think what's happening to them because of what they said towards the Jewish community is a load of bullshit. Because, I mean, if you think about everything that's been said about black people, I mean, look, Donald, again, we talked about this last week. Donald Sterling was on a recorded line talking about how he hates black people when his oh, team is 90% on, black. Sterling, that was so five years ago, talking about his <laughs> wife banging blacks. He sold his team for billions, and now he's living some lavish lifestyle out somewhere. Kanye says a couple back, couple truths about the Jewish community, and now he's all of a sudden he's anti-Semitic and he's losing money from different companies. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. So that's how I feel about it. But I'm not going. I, I don't want to get. A, we're already in trouble. So <laughs> we're not in trouble. I would like to listen. You feel how you want to feel about the origination of Judaism. That's not my place to say. I would like to re-bring about something I found interesting in last week's episode, which was Kanye had posted a message from his personal trainer, quote-unquote, Harley Pasternak, who has very mysterious background in, like, uh, Canadian military and, you know, as far as testing out drugs that... Otherwise, you know, aren't used on like the... Just look up Harley Pasternak. It won't take you long on Twitter or YouTube or whatever to find find some videos where you're like, well, who the fuck is this guy? Like, How is he a personal trainer? Anyway, so check him out. He sent a weird-ass text message to Kanye about, listen, you better... We better talk or else I'm going to send you to Zombieland with some medication. So, yeah, (laughs) some weird shit going on there. And I will not correct be anything that I have said tonight. <laughs> there will be no formal apologies ever. No, we don't apologize here. Only <laughs> facts. And if there's not facts, they're feelings. And we tell you about our feelings. I would never disguise facts as feelings. And they, I know you wouldn't either. No, no. I, we just say I, I understand. Here's a fact. Wide receiver for the LA Rams, Cooper Cup, he's going to miss some time. He's on IR. This from the Rams Wire. Skyler Carlin 
The Los Angeles Rams continue to be plagued by the injury bug this season as Cooper Cup will be placed on injured reserve due to an ankle injury that will require surgery. Yeah, After learning the severity Jeff. of the injury, Cup took to Twitter to share a message, share a message with fans. What's up? So you better pick up Van Jefferson if you don't have him now. <laughs> yeah, I can, dude. I one of my team names is Hot Cup of Kelsey, and I gotta change it. <laughs> Fuck, dude. It, this the Ram season has this. They, it's just it is the definition of Super Bowl hangover. Like everything about their their season is Super Bowl hangover. It's it's fucking awful. Like their defense is playing like shit. And this is what pisses me off is that we lost to this goddamn team. That's what irritates me the most. We let Matthew Stafford beat us. And he he's just awful. Matthew Stafford's awful. He's not, you know he's not awful. He's awful. He's fucking awful. You know he's not There's, awful. Who name name five quarterbacks that he's better than right now? Davis Mills. <laughs> I would take Davis Mills over Stafford. <laughs> James it. James Garoppolo. No, I w- I don't like Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo, but uh, felonious James Walker for the Carolina Panthers. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Otherwise known as PJ Walker. <laughs> PJ Walker. The I way he played the last game. Him. Hell, I take Taylor Heineke over Matt Stafford at this point. You're crazy, man. Am I? This team. Have you, have you seen Matthew Stafford play these last few weeks? They have severely underperformed. <laughs> but overall, this is a good team, the team that needs awesome. to find its bearings. There is no bearings. There you is no that, bearings right now. They got lucky last year with Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford led the league in picks and pick sixes. And they somehow squeaked into the goddamn Super Bowl. Now, here's the problem. If <laughs> If you if the Bengals had a better offensive line, the Bengals win their first Super Bowl. It was just that simple. That offensive line failed Joe Burrow. That just continues to fail Joe Burrow. And it always still continues to fail him. They are the Rams are a, for their frauds, and that Super Bowl is probably gonna be the last time they see a Super Bowl for some time. It's probably gonna be another twenty years before they get there. They did kind of leverage a lot for this window here. It, it's they're awful. They, 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 Many that, picks traded. Many I, I just believe Geno Smith is the best quarterback in that division right now. Who's 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 playing better football than Geno Smith right now in that division? Oh my god, that's such a sad, true. <laughs> I mean, facts and feelings. Folks. Kyler Murray, no. Not fucking at all. Matthew Stafford, damn sure not. Jimmy Garoppolo is a game manager. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, you look at it. Geno Smith is probably the best quarterback in that division at the moment. And if the they can, and if they can, pride get of West Virginia, <laughs> Geno fucking Smith. And if they can get that defense to play a little bit above average, they can win it. They're going to win the division anyway because the the. Niners are shit anyway, so they got a lucky. They got a win over a banged up Chargers team. So, Gino, Gino Smith is the best quarterback in the NFC West. Dude, Pat White and Will Greer <laughs> out of the same school should have been better. He should have been, but they failed. What Never. is up with this guy? He just won't quit. EJ hey, Manuel was drafted before him. You you said you gotta think about it. He was he was our he was he was a he was a he was like a what, second round draft pick to the Jets. He had time to start. He, I don't think he was really ready. Rapid day. <laughs> got eyes on us. TJ called you a Nazi. I did not see that coming. I mean, think about it. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo is definitely a game manager. Like he's not lighting it up. Debo Samuel has become. He has to become one dimension now because they got Christian McCaffrey. So he has to show his inability to run routes. Um, the best receiver on that team is George Kittle. Brandon Ayuk is, he flashes here and there. Um, 
you look at the the Cardinals, obviously DeAndre Hopkins is DeAndre Hopkins. Let's just be honest. But that team looked great without Kyler Murray. They are who we thought they were. <laughs> but they look they look great without Kyler. I mean, who thought Colt McCoy was still in the fucking league? I didn't even know he was still playing football. Yeah, dude, that's a good ass point right there. <laughs> Colt McCoy led the Cardinals to a win on set on Sunday. And then Trace McSorley also still yeah, kicking Trace around. McSorley, and then he got into the game, and they still won without Kyler. So. I mean, if you really look at it, then you got the Rams who are in fucking shambles. <laughs> the Cam Akers don't know if he wants to play or not. They they tried to trade him. That didn't work. Fucking Cooper Cup is carrying a team on his back and getting hurt for it. The defense, the defense is playing like shit. The Aaron Donald ain't you know where the fuck is he at? You you paid him that money in offseason to bring him back so y'all could run it back for what? He should have retired. Jalen Ramsey is, he is, he is a, a former shell of himself. He's getting mm. torched. He's getting absolutely torched. They just don't have any swag right now. That's for huh? sure. The what? team just has no swag right now. Hey, man, you know what? They didn't have swag at the beginning of the season. Once Buffalo punched them in the mouth, it was done. Oh, speaking of, you're gonna go jump straight to this bullshit. Speaking of controversy and quarterbacks, <laughs> the Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson to take limited first team reps and return to practice. Deshaun Watson will not save the Cleveland Browns. He is not this from WKYC.com and Ben Axelrod. You have to stick with Jacoby Brissett. You have to. You can't just throw Deshaun Watson in there thinking, oh, my God, he's going to win it. He's not. Have you heard of CeeLo Green? This is CeeLo Brown. <laughs> this, this, the, the, Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns are an awful – they're an awful organization, but they're not the worst organization. This could help. I mean, Deshaun coming back? To who? He ain't played in two years. Who do y'all think he's going to come out and just start slinging it? No, you saw him in the preseason. He was yeah, it's like riding a bicycle. He was awful. He was fucking awful. It'll he played fine. it two years, and now you he's think in be, new... You think he'll be worse awful. than Jacoby Brissett? No. Jacoby Brissett is not playing bad football. The thing is, you, you, you come up against they, – they lose to the Dolphins on Sunday. The Dolphins are the, – the Dolphins have the arguably the best re- receiving duel right now in the game. Between Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, there's no. I don't think there's a receiving duo that's better than those two are right now. I mean, um, I'd throw I'd throw two Ooh. names in the in the ring, Ooh. but I'm not going to say they're better. Who? It is Ron Devontae. Not even close, dude. Uh, not even close. It is Ron Devontae. They're not even. They're not even close. I mean, and I'm I, not going to say. I miss AJ Ryan. <laughs> These two dudes have been consistent since the season started. They are not close at all. It's not even. I I don't I don't I don't really don't think that there's a better duo than these two right now. I Entirely appreciate terrible. your love for hyperbole. Let's continue. <laughs> not even close. Get the fuck it's out. It's not. Of Who's closer? I would Who? say it's close. <laughs> it's probably close. They- Listen, AJ close. Brown. So uh, between AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, either one dominates. Both those guys dominate games. Period. It's just that I, I think they're both. I think Tyreek leads the league, and I think Jalen Waddle's like right behind him. So uh, it's not close. It's 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 not it's not a, it's not even a debate at this point. Well, listen. <laughs> Someday we'll get a producer to bring up in real time, so I don't, you know, the stats, so I can reveal you for the fool that you are when you say things like this. But I'm just telling you the truth. That's what I'm saying. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is, I am telling you the truth. So right now, here I'm gonna do this. I pulled this up for you. So right now, Marjorie Taylor Green as a running mate for Trump. Interesting. Hasn't announced, but interesting. So you say so you so your 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 goal is AJ Brown and 
Devontae Smith, yes? I'm just, is, is their combined yardage has got to be close. It's got to be within no, 500 no. yards. Dylan Waddle's sitting at 878, and okay. Tyreek Hill's at 1148. So that All right. it's not even close. Well, let me hear uh, so, from my boys. Let me see. Where are your boys at? This is I a one sided argument so far. Devontae Smith has 481 yards. All right, that's half. That's not good. <laughs> it's not. AJ Brown is not even on his page. Well, that's because he's see. so good. <laughs> Check the number one page. It's not because he's so You're good. You're on number two. You got to get the number one to get to AJ Brown. I got to go to the next page to find AJ Brown. Oh, AJ okay. Brown has. <laughs> He's sitting at 385, dude. That's just yards, though. I mean, if we're talking points, these guys are putting up touchdowns, tutties. He has I don't all these useless yards in between. All right, so he has so he has six touchdowns on the year. There we go. He has six touchdowns on the year. His best game was Pittsburgh. Listen, I get it. The Dolphins, they run around a lot. They do a lot of useless <laughs> running around. It's fair. It's not useless. <laughs> What's their record? What's the Eagles' record? I'm just saying. I'm. Just, it's not the same. I mean, you, but you, you also got to look at this. You got to look at the combination of their defense oh. is better than the Dolphins' defense. True. Okay. I thought you were going to give me some schedule. The quarterback is better. Than, their, their quarterback's better. The Eagles' quarterback is better. Okay. So you you gotta put those and you gotta put that into perspective as well. That's why the record is the way it is. Tua and then also Tua was out for fuck <laughs> a couple weeks with the concussion. So that he be, yeah. Ned didn't play Did out very Heather well. Thompson, that was a fun week. That didn't exactly that didn't play out very well for the Dolphins. So, um, it, it, like I said, it's not even close. They they're the two best. They're the best receiving duo in the game, and it's not close. I just you say that, and I just I take exception. <laughs> I just you're you. more than welcome to that. I just take exception with the not even close stuff. The yardage is not close. Jalen Waddle really has you make a eight hundred with yardage. Jalen Waddle has eight hundred and seventy eight like, yards between the two of <laughs> AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. They probably have maybe nine hundred yards between the both of them. <laughs> when you say it's not even close, I it's feel not. like you're, I feel like you're taking a shot at the talent level it's and not. my feelings for them because I know they are very talented players. I, I'm not saying they're so not I talented. Want you to clarify, I'm just say saying it's not even close. You mean yardage? I'm just saying it's not close. The the competition. If you look at the the performances, right. it's not so close. It's going to be difficult. <laughs> it's not close. Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill are the best receiving duo in the game right now. Right. We're going to move on. What do you want me to say? You want me to lie? I want you to be specific. I want you to tell <laughs> the MFers you mean yardage. Because everyone no, knows. I don't mean yardage. AJ Brown is just I mean... as talented as Tyreek Hill. <laughs> He's not as fast. I know that. If you're talking, I'm not talking about individual. I'm talking about as a duo, as a team. Those two are better. I'm picking those two over. A, what's that now? <laughs> okay. How about this, Mr. Smarty Pants? Did Jalen Waddle win the Heisman? I don't think he did. You know who did? Devontae Smith. <laughs> I'm not saying Devontae. I'm not saying they're not talented. They're very talented. Well, what they're do you say not that? The best duo in the game right now. They're not I'm the best right now. This I shouldn't year. be. They're not. You're going to make me wake up my daughter. I'm the passionate best. about this. They're just not the best this year. <laughs> That's cool in college. Great. Great. <laughs> Great. You have a fan. Great. <laughs> it's not. It's because remember, it's facts and we're feelings. It's the yeah. truth. You keep saying it's not even close. It's not. If it was close, I would say it was close. <laughs> You're getting that stupid fucking Heisman commercial for your knees. <laughs> Listen, the Heisman Nissan partnership. Yeah, are you drinking wine? <laughs> yes, I'm drinking wine. <laughs> it's in the bottle. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not gonna make saying. it in, at my time at uh the county. I'm, 
<laughs> he looked like a box guy. Uh, I'm not the, saying the toilet wine. I'm not saying AJ Brown and Devontae Smith aren't talented. They're very talented. They're just not the best this year. Okay. Thank you for <laughs> clarifying that. But it's still not close. Because initially you kept saying Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, they're so good, it's not even close. It's, and I just not. want everyone to know that you don't mean talent wise. I mean, I'm not gonna say they they as a tandem this year, they're the best tandem. AJ Brown is good. They ain't Tyreek. <laughs> yes, AJ Brown is very respectful to women. He's not Tyreek Hill. <laughs> Hill and Waddle are awesome. Shit, exactly. They are, and they've been causing problems for a lot of defenses this year. They a <laughs> ton of them. When it comes to catching an underthrown ball and running around for useless yards, Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill are probably two of the best receivers in the league. <laughs> now you're gonna attack two of them. But when it comes to <laughs> taking a beautifully thrown ball and turning it into a touchdown, <laughs> so that's what we're, we're talking about. So now we're gonna ball. resort. We're gonna resort to attacking two of them. <laughs> Says AJ looks good though, big man in good hands. Yeah, I mean he, he is. I didn't. I never said he wasn't. I'm just telling Ooh. Dylan. Dylan just don't want to hear it. Two that weeks was. ago, the Tennessee Titans finished a game without a wide receiver catching a single pass. So that shows you the difference AJ Brown makes in a passing game. Hey, he's a difference maker when he's on the get on the field. You have to play him, but right now, if I had to choose. Between two receivers, I'm taking Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Just that simple. Well, that's why we're both losing in fantasy. <laughs> I'm not lo- well, I'm losing in those other ones, but I'm dominating my other one just off that. Anyway, but that's just that's just what I'm saying. If Tua gets if Tua gets you know his throwing together, then you know they'll be it's gonna be a problem, but I don't know. Let's I quickly know. let's quickly get through these college scores because I know how much you want to gloat about the Bulldogs, no, and then we can talk. We a, we can, then we can yeah. talk about an embarrassing loss that occurred on Thursday night, not just Monday night. <laughs> so, did your Syracuse? Did they lose again? Oh, shut up! Just goddamn. So uh, USC took care of Colorado, fifty-five seventeen <laughs> on Friday night. Nate's Georgia Bulldogs staying number one, taking care of the other Bulldogs, the Maroon Bulldogs, as they say. Need more the, cowbell. The, the fucking cowbells are annoying. It's been a while since we played them. Those fucking cowbells are annoying as shit. I think I would rather have those stupid horns they blow at the World Cup than Probably. these fucking cowbells. Uh, Ohio State absolutely dominating Indiana, 56-14. Michigan, same thing over in Nebraska. Suck on that horny gnome and your Nebraska beef huskers. <laughs> 34-3. Texas goes down to TCU, oh, which is great. Oh, how about that? The Horn Frogs. Yeah, which is great. I, I'm, I'm and then so that only touchdown came from, from came from the defense. Damn, those Christian boys out in Texas. Take yeah, care they, of business. Missouri got their asses handed to them. Tennessee, a little bit of a pissed off game here. 66 24, taking it out on Missouri after that loss to Georgia. That was shocking. Washington was not supposed to beat Oregon. Woo! Not supposed to beat Oregon. Number 25, Huskies over number six, Oregon Ducks, 37 34. Wow. Yeah. Didn't, so, yeah, I was shocked at that one. I was like, damn, that was their only opportunity. And they were number yeah. six. Phoenix, Penix Jr., out Penix. doing Bo Nix. Penix Jr. He played his ass off. Damn. LSU uh, just snuck their way into the the national to the fucking SEC title game. Purple Tigers, really? Yep. Damn. They okay. Beat, with Alabama winning and then them winning, beating Arkansas, because Ole Miss was supposed to handle business, but they fucking shit the bed, and you can't rely on Ole Miss to handle business. So, so now we got to play LSU. So it's Ooh, Georgia LSU. That's the title yep. game. Yep, Georgia LSU. I feel like that's an easy bulldog it's, it's win, be, but what do I know? It, it, it should be, as long as we come out and play correctly. Damn. One new band is gonna have in a bowl game. That'd be interesting. Yeah, they they yeah, they're gonna get they're gonna sneak into a bowl game. 
So we're going to be fucking Notre Dame or some team that dominate? Probably. Eh, I don't know. I, again, I've always I said this all year. Alabama, they don't have an NFL talent that they had on offense and defense. Will Anderson and uh, Bryce Hart, Bryce Young is probably the, the only NFL talent they have currently on that team right now. So yeah, it's, it's definitely more spread out. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Clemson 31-16 over Louisville. They had, the, they had the bounce back after that <laughs> losing last week. On ranked Arizona <laughs> defeating the Chip Kelly still, I believe. I think so. Led UCLA Bruins. Utah takes down Stanford, no problem, 42-7. Penn State 30-0 to over the Terps. Uh, Tar Heels take down the Demon Deacon, 36-34. BC over 16th ranked NC State 21 20 in a close one. Um, the Golden Knights of UCF defeat 17th ranked Tulane. Kansas State Wildcats defeat Baylor 31 30 or 31 3, I should say. Um, Notre Dame over Navy and wow 35 32. Four touchdowns for uh, Notre Dame quarterback there. Uh, they beat Navy. Yeah, Notre Dame's always interesting. What? Just their schedule and like the way they end up getting trounced in the bowl games, but everyone loves to see them play anyway. It's just a very interesting team. Purdue. Um, Purdue, don't call them Purdue, don't, takes down Illinois, the Fighting Illini, 31 uh, 24. Oh my God. Hey, what the fuck, man? Syracuse started out so hot and then they lose four straight. Okay, uh, let me put on my glasses they, here. They were undefeated, and then they just go. They lose to Clemson, and they just like fucking spiral. Jesus Christ! Okay. <laughs> and then Vandy beat Kentucky, which is surprising. Yeah, so the Seminoles defeat the Syracuse Orange at home in the dome, thirty-eight to three. Thank God people showed up for that. Drove all the way out there, to <laughs> get blown out for nothing. Uh, Vandy takes down the Wildcats of Kentucky, 24-21. Dang. Another team that started out hot and then lost, then ended up losing. So so we've already got championship games being determined. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I think Michigan, I think oh, Michigan plays Ohio players. State this week. Do they? Uh, Navy, UCF, Michigan, nah, Illinois. Yeah, so I guess they got another week or so. Ah, Alabama's got a real tough, real <laughs> stiff competition here in Austin P. 7 3, Austin P. That's a trap game right there. <laughs> Definitely a trap game. <laughs> uh, so what else we got? Notre Dame, BC. Okay, Georgia, Kentucky. Unranked Kentucky now. We're at Kentucky, too. So we got to uh, come with it. Canes and Clemson. <laughs> Tennessee has South Carolina. That should be a. All right. It should be a, it should be a, a good walkout. Let's see, you got to take down the dragons of it's UAB. They should handle Blazers. Them. I should say Blazers. It'd be nice if they lose. It'd be really nice if they lost that game. I would really be happy if they lost that game. I should get my dang banner. So important to bring up a banner. Banner sets the tone. All right, on to the NFL, my friend, and your. Atlanta Falcons. I don't even want to talk about this fucking game. I literally, there's a picture that I saw on Twitter. There's a picture that I posted as well. And fucking Marcus Mariota is throwing this fucking ball from his back. He's laying down and decides to throw up a duck and gets, uh, luckily he was down. But I'm like, all right. As a, for me as a coach, if I'm watching my professional quarterback do some dumb shit like that, I'm going to – he's going to have a problem when he comes to the sideline. You have a fucking problem when you come to the sideline. There's a high probability that I'm going to yell at you for the next 10 minutes because I need you to explain to me what the fuck were you doing. There was a couple plays where he just threw the ball up and I'm like, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you doing? So I'm over this team. They they asked Arthur Smith was asked about if um 
what's his face? I can't think of his kid's name right now. Ritter? If Desmond Ritter is going to ever get in, he's like, there's not a situation. I'm like, you mother. Yeah, way to go. Just spit in your fans' faces. Oh, that's, wow. That's, really? That's what he basically said that there's no, there's not a situation. I'm like, all right, I get it. But he's like, we're still in the playoff. Dude, we're one and four away. We're four and six. Our next couple games are going to be tough ones. Because I think, I know we got the rank. Uh, who, who, let me see. Let me pull up our schedule. Because this shit here is, it's it's annoying. And for him to say that and just be like, okay with that, it irritates me. It, it, it irritates my soul. So our next couple games are, we have fucking Chicago, the Commanders, Pittsburgh. Then we have a bye week. Then we have Saints, Ravens, Cardinals, Bucks. Are you fucking with me? And the Bears are just getting better. Justin Fields is getting comfortable. We tend to have issues with mobile quarterbacks. I mean, if Taylor Heineke plays, there's a probability that we might lose that game. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. There's the fucking picture right there. There's the fucking picture. That's the point picture that's been haunting me for the last week or so. That's and the just, picture. From this picture, you're not going to get the the full, you know, description of the play. But basically, Mariota's rolling to his right. Yes. He gets tripped up. Uh-huh. And he's... Doing a somersault, fucking like he's falls. rolling to the ground, and as he's rolling, like this, as he's tumbling around, he throws doing the, a somersault. He throws the ball in the air. He throws the ball in the air after throwing two picks already in this game. I think God were, he was down by contact because I, this shit, they, yeah, this picture here ended up being a pick six. That's a professional quarterback. That's a professional NFL quarterback right there in that picture. He's a professional. He's listed as a professional. That's what we gotta look. That's what we have to look forward to. This you know, time. This is not a <laughs> already right, says Mariota sucks. He does. He absolutely does. He sucked that night, dude. Because this is a team that was in the lead for you know yeah. the NFC South. Like and all we had to do is beat the Panthers. For Hell, him all we had to do is beat the Chargers. If we had beat the Chargers and the Panthers, we would have had a good lead on Tampa. Now look where we're at. We have this embarrassing ass picture, and now we got to play Chicago. Wait, let me see. Did we play Chicago? Are we in Chicago? I think we're fucking in Chicago. Um, um no, oh no, we're at home. Thank God we're at home for fucking Chicago. Because Jesus Christ. Cause I, I just just the NFC sucks like hard. Yes, I, I absolutely agree at this point. Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think top to bottom, I would say it's more competitive than the AFC right now. The you think you think the NFC is more competitive? Yeah, like when you look at the East, I mean, Giants and Cowboys are both, I think, two losses. Oh, he said NFC South. He, he's he oh he's mentioned the yeah. south not the entire NFC so that makes oh, sense dude, yes. I, mean, I I definitely agree we do suck we fucking awful there's no competitive there's no competition we got dickheads like this who's fucking throwing the ball from their back and then Tom Brady is Tom Brady is Tom Brady the the Bucks season if whoever gets in and from this division is going to get their asses handed to them the first round in a wild card it's just that simple. Cause it's just there. There's no. It's just we're done here. Like you can just go ahead and just, just go ahead and get rid of the whole division. I still believe in the Bucks. Why? Have you seen them play? I just think all the names are there. Like uh, when it, when the when it's time when it's truly time when the lights are on and when they know it's time to play postseason football. The obviously the obviously Brady, but like. The Devin Whites, you know, the Levante Davids, the the Anton Winfields, like the guys who have been there and really shown up in big games. All those guys were available when they got beat twenty one to three by the Panthers. I get it. I'm not All saying those guys that, are there. <laughs> listen, this is not the juggernaut team, <laughs> you know, for sure. But like when it comes postseason time, 
the Bucks will represent the NFC South and they will be competitive in the first game they play in the postseason. I, they, they will not get blown out in the postseason. I, I don't I, – I definitely – I'm going to have to disagree with that one, sir. I, I do. Because I if based on what I've seen, that offensive line is in shambles. They can't protect Brady. They had their best game against the Seahawks, and the Seahawks are not – defensively, they're not great. Well, just think of who, like, possibly – like, you know, if they're the division leader, they're going to be playing um, a wild card team. If they play a team like the Giants, you know, if they play a team like the the Bears, the the Packers, like you're not going to be favoring the other team per se. I think the I think the Giants can beat the the Bucks. I think they could, but there's not there's not going to be a situation in the first round of the playoffs if it goes where I think and the Bucks are a division champs. I can't see the opposing team being heavily favored, if favored at all, at this point. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just, man, I know they've had struggles, but, like, still, name the names. I mean, Brady, Godwin, Evans, Fournette. Fournette's hurt. You know, the tackles, like, okay, <laughs> that's fair. But, like, so, Rashad White, Rashad White's I, been fine. Like, I mean, he defense. has been fine, but, I mean, it's just, like I said, at this point, they got to – I, I just don't see them being able to, to turn – to been playing bad this – the whole year and then to say that they can flip a switch, I just – I just don't – I don't – I don't know. I don't see it, but it may happen, but <clears throat> they lost to the Panthers 21-3. to three. Okay? And they had all those guys you named healthy and they were shut out the entire first half and well maybe the the first half they kept Brady to three points just to put it in perspective you you allow a team that just fired their head coach and their offensive coordinator and they beat you 21 three so um yeah it's 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 not looking pretty good for them but our division is is trash the Saints are done they don't even have a fucking quarterback so michael thomas no. they cut michael thomas michael thomas ain't played in two years and he's on ir again <laughs> you gotta let this man go you know who's been an awesome story who deontay foreman let's not talk about this man 31 carries 130 yards and a touchdown for the big man out of texas please can we not make a comeback in his career i don't want to talk i don't want to discuss this guy's name all right so the Panthers take Thursday night football at home 25-15 in a mostly PJ Walker victory. I think he played the whole game. Yeah, he played the whole game. Yeah. Um he so didn't do much, up. but he played the whole game. Then we had our first ever NFL game in Germany. Yeah, bring up the screen again, Dylan. Bring up the screen? Yeah, you're not sharing your screen. We can't see you. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> You can't see that you're not showing your screen. I got off Marcus and I forgot. <laughs> All right. Let me bring up the scores here again. <laughs> Play along here, folks. We are a video podcast, so just so you know. Ah, oh, so we got the Buccaneers claiming victory. The five and five Buccaneers over the six and four Seattle Seahawks. Brady Bucks beats Seahawks 21 16 in historic Germany game. Um, Tom Brady has become the first quarterback and only quarterback to win an NFL game in three different countries now. That is England. Uh, I mean, three countries outside of the U.S. That is England, Mexico, and Germany. Geno Smith out through Tom Brady. Just to put that into perspective. That goes to show you he, he, he went 22 for 32 for 275 and two touchdowns. Tom Brady didn't even come close to that. And yet... Pulled out the V. <laughs> this game here, How about game of the White fucking White. year, dude. I feel really starting with this. I'm gonna this say game. the best game in the last two or three years. I'm gonna say this. This is up there with the Chiefs. What game was that? Chiefs? Was it Chiefs Chargers? What game was that? Where was the Chiefs play? I think it was Chiefs. I think it was Chargers. 
I mean, probably Chiefs Chargers, Chiefs Bills was an awesome game. Why no, they, yeah, that, I think it was Chiefs Bills. Where, where, where they're like, yeah. the, I was like a regular season game where they went to like, I think it was the score was like fifty five to something. Saints Rams changed the rules because of that game. No, oh, no one cares about that. This game here though, this this game definitely had like, everyone. So I heard somebody say that the Justin Jefferson catch was not as good as the Odell catch. I'm like, what crack are you smoking? Yeah. What crack are you smoking? Odell's mm-hmm. catch was it was uncontested. The only reason why it happened, it was a pass in a friend. This man, listen, literally, he was falling back. The ball was overthrown. The DB had the ball in his hands. He had that ball. It was picked. He grabbed one arm, pulls it out, makes sure it doesn't hit the ground. And seriously? There's I'm sorry, this catch is better than Odell's catch. It's better than the helmet catch. And any other catch you can think of, this that it was fourth and eighteen, I think it was. Yeah, I mean the circumstances to go with the actual catch. I think it was fourth and eighteen. It was fourth down, just fourth down in general. You, Kirk Cousins was like, "Fuck it, <laughs> he's there, he's over there somewhere." He throws it. Literally, I'm like, this ball is intercepted. And he pops out with the ball in his. I'm like, there's no way he cuts his ball. Catch of the year, catch of the century. I don't care what you want. There's no catch better than that catch. No, the engineers at Madden are going to spend the next year trying to recreate that you, catch you on the game. You can't recreate that. Not on Madden. Sacrifice every other element of the game just to there's catch no that way. one catch. There's no way you could. I don't. You could. You can sit for hours and try to recreate that catch on Madden. You will not be able to do it at all. This just won't happen. That catch was and it say it saved the game for him. It kept the drive alive, it saved the game, and then he catches another one right there at the one yard line. And then they get stuffed. And then here's my thing. It's was it 24? It was 23 27. It's a four point game. Yes. You get the ball on the one on your half inch line. Take the safety. What are you doing? Take the fucking safety. I don't put me in a I'm gonna put you in shotgun. You stand your bitch ass on that white line. Catch the ball that's a safety. I don't care what you do. <laughs> Listen to me. When they stopped them on fourth down, I was like, damn. Buffalo wins again. I there was nothing in my body that said they're gonna fumble this ball <laughs> in the end zone. Oh and yeah, the Vikings are gonna recover it. Nothing, nothing in my body said that was gonna happen. So I mean, a key part of this that I wish I had pulled up, but uh, like, is how much time was left. So for those of you who didn't see it, and I don't know how you didn't see it, but the Vikings are driving down. And after that amazing catch we just talked about, and after another great catch that uh, Jefferson made down like within the five yard line, Vikings are on the goal line. It's fourth down, and there's definitely less than a minute left. I'm not sure if there was. I, know, I think they were well on. The, I think they were well on the like. They were probably like with the 40 second mark somewhere okay. around there. There wasn't that much time left on the clock. Not much time left at all. And so the Vikings run a QB sneak from one yard out with Kirk Cousins. And I'll be damned if he doesn't get stuffed at the one yard line. And just falls down, essentially. Goes to reach out across the goal line after he'd already touched. Uh, Goes to replay. Clearly wasn't the touchdown. So now you're thinking, okay, damn, how about those Buffalo Bills? You know, what a stand. What a way to keep the streak alive, the winning streak. And all they got to do now is just do anything but what they do on the very next play, which is fumble the fucking ball and the Vikings get a touchdown. So that was like no time left. The Vikings get a miraculous touchdown, which should have never happened. I'm texting my buddy like, oh, suck it, Bills Mafia. That's what you get. And I think the game's over. Little do I know. The game's not over. The game's not over. Bills managed to somehow drive down and get a fucking field goal and tie the thing up. And here we go with another wild game with the Bills, Vikings, and just 
Just it was a wild ass game. Goes in OT and ultimately the Vikings pull it out. I can't remember exactly how it ended now. Now, mind you, most of this shit happens all within a span of 40 seconds. This is a 40 second window where the they 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 stuff they stuff the Vikings, they get the ball back, they hike the ball, it's fumbled, they recover it. This shit happens all in 40 seconds. They kick the ball off. The Buffalo Bills drive down the field in time to get the field goal. And on that drive, there was a pass to Gabe Davis that even Mike, uh, what's his face there, Patricio or, fuck, I forget his name, uh, uh, Pereira, Mike Pereira, head of officiating, said they should have probably looked at because it was, you know, under two minutes, but the booth fucked up on that one. They didn't look at it. I wonder why they didn't look at it. Maybe because the ratings were through the roof and everyone was watching and that would have fucked everything up if they turned it over. But, you know, in hindsight, oh, they should have looked at it. You should have looked at it. You but, definitely you know, should have looked at it. For the sake of the game, <laughs> that's what it is. Did you see the weird shit that he did while he was on camera still? Who's that? Mike Pereira. No, they do some Al Franken. like. Yeah, so, like, at one point, like, Al he's Roker, still on he's... camera. Mind you, he's still on camera. And like he flicks his tongue at someone off camera. Ugh. Yeah. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are you do? Like, what is happening uh, behind the camera? Like, it's, it was it was extremely weird. You you should Google just YouTube it later. It's weird yeah. as fuck. But I'm gonna say this game was the last 40 seconds of the game was absolutely fucking insane. Insane. I mean, it, and we're not giving enough credit to. Justin Jefferson, I Justin mean, Jefferson was he he's easily arguably they people keep saying Jamar Chase. I, I gotta go with Justin Jefferson. You know, he he doesn't have the speed, the size. Uh, yeah, Robert Dave, that was a wild ending. Hell yeah, it was. He doesn't have the speed, the size, but the guy has a knack for getting open and catching the ball, and that's what you need to do as a receiver. And man, he had a catch that you know, like. The amazing one-handed catch was the best catch I've probably ever seen. Like you said, like the Odell catch was uncontested. The Tyree, uh, you know, David Tyree helmet catch was pretty amazing. But I don't know, something about this catch, man. Dude, it was fourth and 18. It was just different, man. <laughs> it was fourth and – you. It, that's, that's the thing. That's what you got to put into perspective. It was fourth and long. And Kirk Cousins is like, fuck it. And he throws it. And he comes on with it. If if that ball goes any other direction, it's a the game's over. And they Justin kept, Jefferson wanted that ball more than he than the cornerback did. He took and, it. And they wanted him to score for sure because they threw that ball. They threw a um like a corner route to get them to the five, and then they threw a slant route, which initially was ruled a touchdown because they thought Justin Jefferson landed on the defender, but they looked at it again. You yeah, know, he on was the short. Fight. Yeah, he was short, and that's what got them on the goal line to begin with, and that's how we got to the fucking Kirk Cousins sneak that didn't happen. But anyway, Vikings pulled it out. This game. (laughs) What the hell, dude? This game was fucking retarded. You watch the highlights, and you would swear the Bears won. The Bears were supposed to win this game. So they were up 14. They were up 14. So it was 24-10, and Detroit gets the ball. DeAndre Swift, DeAndre Swift scores. Next drive, couple plays in. Um, Justin Fields getting pressured. He rolls right, throws up a duck. It gets picked off and returned for six, and it ties the game up. I was like, "There's by no his former there. teammate Jeffrey Okuda." Right then, the, the next State. drive. Comes back, he takes the ball, was it 78 yards for a touchdown? It just runs through the middle of everyone. And just runs 78 yards for a touchdown. And then their defense wow. allows Detroit to come back <laughs> and score. Oh, after they missed the extra point. Of course. <laughs> I mean, kicking in Chicago, my God. But Justin Fields, I mean, he scored a touchdown even earlier in the game where he's rolling to the right and then he cuts back to the left and Aiden Hutchinson like didn't have the right angle and Justin Fields makes it into the end zone from like five yards out on 
listen, I I watched him play in college. I knew he was fast, but He's he is faster good. than I even thought, man. Especially on that 70, 60 yard run. Like he just outran everyone. And they and they, I think they're now, I think they're finally letting they're finally realizing we need to let this kid do what he does best. Yeah. And that's fucking let's let him use his legs. Cause but they're they're playing pretty decent football. On that same token, like you know, Cole Komet is starting to get involved more. He's got like f- four touchdowns in the last three games. So yeah. They yeah, need had a nice game the last game, so definitely keep that. Just I don't know. Chase see Claypool what the, see what the kid player. is good at. What ask him what he likes. Right. I, I feel like too many coaches try to fit their QB into their box. Maybe I'm wrong. Ask the kid what he's good at and what he likes, and maybe he'll thrive. You know, what, I believe so. If you if you if you can figure out what he likes and what he's comfortable with, I think I think you'll have a better. I think the offense would be a little bit better. If you watch Alabama Jalen Hurts, you're going to think he's only good at eye formation, bootlegs. Listen, at Oklahoma, Lincoln Riley said to this kid, you got spread formation. Let's see what you can do. And now you saw this last game. I mean, they didn't lose the game because of Jalen Hurts, and he was in a lot of spread formation. So these these guys figured out. They play more 7-7 seven and seven as co- young quarterbacks than they ever have. So give them that. Yeah, we're bored as shit. No, I ain't gonna lie to you. That, this that, game. that game was boring as shit. I mean, there was the flea flicker, and that was it. Yeah, it's just boring. It, like the, the Broncos, the Broncos, Nathaniel Hackett. I, I'm I'm predicted to be fired on Black Monday. <laughs> when Black Monday happens, I I I, I put I, I put some money that Nathaniel Hackett doesn't have a job. If they if they bring Nathaniel Hackett back, the Denver Broncos are are, are dumpster fire. They're, they're, they they want to keep losing because this guy you, is a fucking moron. You can't trade all that you traded for Russell Williams. You can't bring in Randy Gregory, and you can't now trade away Nick Chubb or uh, Bradley Chubb, I should say, for three and six. For fucking three and six, dude. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Nathaniel Hackett is he, he? There's no way he. There's no way he comes back next year. If the Bronco, there's you can't see you can't see a future with this man. Like we literally saw the multiple mishaps with time management. They had to hire a fucking. They hired somebody to help him with time management. They literally he has someone specifically designated to help him with time management. I'm like, this is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. And. As far as Russell Wilson goes, we are well beyond the finger injury. No, Maybe it still affects him, but he's just bad. He's if just it bad. does, then him and Dak Prescott have completely different finger rehab Maybe going Carroll on. Because right. Dak Prescott looks fine. Maybe Pete Carroll was right about him because he is just fucking terrible. I don't know how he survived in fucking Seattle. So that was that game. The Titans... Beat the Broncos seventeen Chiefs, to ten, and Chiefs now dominated this game. Yep, she's definitely dominated the Jaguars. They, uh, they gave them 17. seventeen. They gave them seventeen points. They're like, y'all know what? We we gonna give you a couple. We gonna make it look competitive. If you have Patrick Mahomes in fantasy football, you likely won yet another game with a four touchdown performance. Right. This man yeah. does nothing but throw. Dude, that offense. That offense looks good. Yeah, for you sure. Know, oh, we gotta hope Juju gets better. That that yeah, hit Juju. Cool. Hey, speaking of Syracuse, Andre Cisco, huh? He's looking pretty good for the Jags. How about that? <laughs> who? Don't say who. <laughs> Everyone knows who Andre Cisco is. <laughs> Very <laughs> young. Who? Rising star for the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> Safety, Andre Cisco. <laughs> Out of Syracuse. Look it up. Jesus Christ. So yeah, the Chiefs uh seven and two, Jags three and seven. Moving on to the Dolphins Browns, 39-17, as we talked about earlier, with that tandem of the Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. That is just not even close when it comes to the competition. Close. Not even close to the competition. Not even close. Tung Vailoa stays hot, throws three touchdowns, Dolphins route brows. The MVP chance for Tua Tungvaluwa started early in the second half, and they, they didn't cut that shit short. He ain't win no MVP. 
So if you were going to vote MVP right now between, and I don't have this pulled up or anything, but probably the most likely candidates, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. Patrick Mahomes. Damn. Okay. The reason why I say that is because Patrick Mahomes, obviously he consistently, he's had multiple four touchdown games this season. Um, He's making the least amount of mistakes between the other two, you know, named quarterbacks. Obviously, Josh Allen is leading the league in interceptions right now. Um, Jalen Hurts hadn't turned the ball over as much. He's just not really lighting up the scoreboard. I mean, the Pittsburgh game was probably his best game as far as throwing. Um, But Patrick Mahomes has been consistent. That's the consistency. Is That's what I like, consistency. And he's been very consistent, even without Tyreek Hill. That's fair. That Darius is- Tony be a big piece to that offense. He could be. Yeah, I hope they definitely use him to. No, I think I they're going to use him. I think once he gets settled, now that Juju's out, he's most definitely going to he's going to see some targets. I think um, Miko Hartman was missing too this weekend. So I think if those injuries continue or they stick for next weekend, he's going to see a lot more targets. Speaking of Tony, his former team, the New York Giants, advanced to seven and two. Hey, them Giants, man, they they the real deal. You better watch out. Saquon Barkley getting thirty five carries in this game, one hundred and fifty two uh, yards and a touchdown. And you got to because if Daniel Daniel Jones is not he's he's not that thrower, so you're going to rely heavily on that run. True. So, I mean, Darius Slayton, what three for ninety five and a. A touchdown. He only had three receptions. Like, yeah, he had that one big catch and run. Yep. So yeah. it's you're gonna they're gonna if they're gonna make it to the playoffs, they're gonna have to rely on Saquon. The New York Giants have been finding ways to win all season. They sure did. Yep. Sure, have. that's what they that's what they got to do. This hey, props to them. This game here, Kenny Pickett is not that guy. Pittsburgh Steelers uh, advance over the New Orleans Saints 20 to 10. Two teams with three wins right here after the game. And as you can see, your top performers to the right, nobody has a fucking touchdown. I did <laughs> not notice a single something fucking person has a touchdown. Not uh, one. Watts return fuels Steelers to 20 to 10. Okay, so TJ Watts back. TJ Watt makes, and the thing is, he makes that entire team better. Yeah. Not just the defense. The offense plays better. Like when he's there, that team, that's a completely different team. He's just a playmaker. If he I don't think if he tears, I don't think if he if he doesn't tear his bicep or tricep, whatever he tore, I think they have a much better record. Because they were dominating Cincinnati. And I think they have a much better record. It could be. He's the heart and soul of that fucking whole team i guess uh jeff saturday's debut as a coach everybody from the from the head coach to the assistant coach to the trainers to the position coaches to the popcorn boys to everybody that fuck that works for the the raiders organization should be fired how the hell do you lose to an analyst the guy did play center yeah, Houseway, no, I'm not trying to hear that shit. You, Josh McDaniels, got out coached by an analyst. Jeff Saturday was an analyst a week ago. He had a he had one full week to come up with the game plan, and he beat you at home. Yeah, that's probably the worst thing. Is it was in Vegas. The Colts beat you with Jeff Saturday, an analyst, at home. Let that shit sink in, Raiders fans. That's what happened to you. you and then, and then on top of that, then Derek Carr decided to get on the podium. And, you know, I, I'm 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 all for you know guys expressing their emotions, but don't cry like a bitch when you lose. Okay, you did it to yourself. You are you. Your whole family sucks at football. Okay, I hope I, I don't like. 
I hope just keep your kids from playing football. And if they do play football, don't make them don't let them play quarterback. <laughs> don't let them play quarterback because you fucking suck at quarterback. Okay, you're fucking awful. Your brother was awful. You're awful. It's time for it's time for Raiders fans to realize Derek Carr is not that guy. He's been here for way too long and done very little for us. And then we go and we trade for fucking Devontae Adams. He has a career game. For what? For what? Dude, we lose by five. If also if you have Devontae Adams in fantasy, you've been killing it. You've been fucking killing it. But if, if you, you have Devontae Raiders Adams on your actual NFL football team, you have two wins. <laughs> You're two and seven. Two. You're two and fucking seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and one of those losses, <laughs> you were blowing the Cardinals asses out. And he yeah. was... <laughs> they gave up way too much to have two wins. You gave up way too much. If you are in the if you are in the Raiders organization, it's time to fire everybody. Yes. It, it really is. Because that's that that's just awful. This is another team that needs everybody fired. <laughs> Mike McCarthy got to go. Quite a battle here between the Packers and Cowboys. Bullshit. They were went up 14. To overtime. They were up 14 in the fourth quarter. 14. And you let <laughs> Christian Watts. He just he just had a game. He had a day. He, had, he put up three touchdowns against you. Bro. Don't get me started on Christian Watson. <laughs> let me guess you had him in a fantasy too. Dude, I picked I had- him up. Yep. Just in case one of my receivers wasn't going to make it. Mm-hmm. And he and played like dropped. shit. He played like shit for all of fucking five or six weeks. And then he has his fucking breakout game. And he looks like a goddamn all-star. And it's going to be difficult to get him back. This motherfucker. Yep. But uh, the Cowboys, they should be ashamed of themselves. Because there's no way you should have lost a team that the week prior put up nine points against Detroit. Nine, you hear me? They put up nine, and no, I'm not talking in German. Nine points against the fucking Lions. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> okay. So three you let whole them field 30. goals. You let them put up 31 on you. Woo. Your defense is slow. Let's just be that defense is not good. That, that you defense let them is, put up 31 on you. With Alan Lazard, who has a bum shoulder, Sammy Watkins, who has a bum career, and he had a couple big pet catches too, <laughs> and Christian Watson, who has nobody knows who he is until this week. To this week, this is this, he, and and he let everybody know I can play football. Every time he caught a ball, it's a touchdown. <laughs> Every time, <laughs> so. <laughs> The Cowboys secondary should should be looking at, you know, maybe figuring out why they got getting torched. Trayvon Diggs is not um, – he's not – he's good, but he's not – he's not that hype that they had him last year. It probably is CeeDee Lamb's best game of his career. That's, absolutely. That's definitely a career game for CeeDee Lamb, but it wasn't enough. That <laughs> – they let you, – you literally let Aaron Rodgers beat you. And they're on a downward spiral. And they beat oh. you. Oh, yeah. This, factors, yeah I, I think sure. they might bounce back from this game. I mean, they're not going to catch the Vikings, but right. I think they they might bounce back. How do you feel about this uh, battle in the NFC West? <laughs> Good Lord. I, mean, I didn't know Kyler was hurt. I was like, why the hell is Colt I McCoy think he, was it? I think it's a hamstring injury yeah. or something. You got and then before I knew it, Trace McSorley was playing. <laughs> Colt McCoy, <laughs> he went 26 for, t- for 238 in a touchdown. And then Trace McSorley comes in. <laughs> I thought for sure at some point we were going to see that fucking, what the hell was that guy's name at the beginning? Screvenger or Streminger? <laughs> the Rams are a fucking joke. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, I'll talk about quarterbacks. <laughs> The only the only quarterback that could play worse than Trace McSorley is John Wofford. What the hell, dude? 
That shit was terrible. The Rams, the Rams are so shambles. much invested in their team from Matt Stafford to Jalen Ramsey to Aaron Donald to Allen Robinson to I mean it's you all talent. guns of blazing. And they you completely forgot to put anyone competent as, as their backup quarterback. You got all of this, and you're three and six. You're two and I four. I mean, the four. amount of eggs they put into a uh, the Matt Stafford basket, a guy who has known for being beat the shit out of his whole career. You could have, and you're Gardner gonna be Minshew. like, yeah, well, if he can't play, we're screwed. You could have traded for Gardner Minshew. Uh, you, there, there, there's a couple, I, I say, competent quarterbacks that are out there somewhere. That yeah, the you could Jets would give get. you Joe Flacco today. <laughs> and he would, and you would be it. better than what we saw this past weekend. That shit was fucking terrible. And, and the thing is, I don't think Matthew Stafford's gonna be. I don't think he's gonna be available. Probably for another week. I don't believe it. If he does, he this this got to be his last year. It's time for him to hang in the cleats up because he's awful. He's a bad quarterback. Getting those stem cells pumped into his elbow right you, now. You, you you can keep saying, well, when he was in Detroit, yeah, but he made a lot of bad plays too. Like, he did. I mean, they only gave him the best, one of the best receivers ever. So, <laughs> and still couldn't win. I fell asleep on this game. This game was boring. I, I didn't did. watch. Same I didn't here. Watch. I mean, thank thank you for saying that because yeah. I, I did the same fucking thing. I too. didn't. I think I probably watched maybe like. I think I saw the first touchdown that Justin Herbert threw. And then I think at some point I was just like, yeah, I think I turned on the movie and went to sleep. Again, I, I mean, there's something missing here with the top. No stats. touchdowns. You're, you're fucking the leaders. Fuck? How are you? <laughs> there's no touchdowns at all. 22 Nothing. to 16, and the winning, the winning team has no touchdowns to show. None. Like, I, I, I don't know. Justin Herbert's a bad quarterback. No, nah, I'm not. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Justin Herbert is dealing with injuries, and he's suffering for it. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, his he lost his All Pro tackle, and like, and he's and they're, I think they lost another one. And I'm like, you can't really, you can't fix it. But my thing is, he's not overcoming the obstacles in the way that fellow AFC quarterbacks Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen would. Yeah, and I, I think I think once Keenan Allen gets healthy and Mike Williams get healthy, I think he should be able to overcome some of these issues. But at this point, you can't. He's suffering right now, and it's 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 hard to watch. And you know, I mean, yes, those two guys are out, and that's huge. You know, I'm not just gonna try to discount not having Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, but I mean, they really went in with like. Khalil Mack and also all the guys on, you yeah. know, JC Jackson hasn't really worked out, but definitely well, in the back end, well, they've given you right pieces. And on the offensive line, they've given you pieces. So, I mean, JC Jackson, he told he 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 dislocated his kneecap, so he's done for the season. Yeah, and then Khalil Mack, he shows up here and there, like he's not as dominant as he was. And then obviously, you still got Durbin James; he's gonna be him. At, at the end of the day, it's just Austin Eckler can only do so much on offense. Yeah, but I think once they get a healthy Mike Williams and a healthy Keenan Allen back, I think that offense is going to look different. It's just you know, if if Justin Herbert's, and it's way too early to write the book on his career, but if he goes through and there's no like postseason success to speak of, I won't hear that he never got help because he definitely got help. Yeah, he definitely did. And for right now, like even like right now, I they I saw a thing on TikTok and they were like, "Would you rather?" And it was like a two edition. And it was when they brought up Justin Herbert. I'm like, I'd pick Justin Herbert over two at this point. But if the season continues the way it's going, and Tua gets into the postseason and Justin Herbert doesn't again, then um, at some point you got to look at him like, okay, who's better at this point? Well, perhaps the most disappointing, depressing part of the night. We're two hours <laughs> in, and we got to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles not being undefeated anymore. Taylor Heineke, again, <laughs> Taylor Heineke didn't even throw a touchdown. He threw an interception. 
Brian Robinson had he he's coming about like you gotta do you gotta give it to him, dude. This kid, how you get you get shot twice in the leg, miss five games, come back, and now you're the feature back. I, yeah, I'm not going to take anything away from Brian Robinson. That dude is the man. But the, the rest of this is the same season coming back from fucking getting shot. <laughs> uh, you're scoring touchdowns in the NFL. Like, that's, that's not human. Not at all. You, you, at this point, you, you got a lot to say. Like, I'm, this is what I do. Yeah. You know, I get shot, I score touchdowns. That's what I do. I'm fucking bulletproof. What do you want? Basically. But yeah, this I, I think I think the Eagles needed this. The Eagles needed I think the Eagles needed to lose this game to get all that bullshit pressure off of oh, are they gonna go undefeated? Are they gonna have this undefeated season? The 72 Dolphins, blah 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 blah. I feel like it's a distraction. I feel like them losing this game was necessary. And now they, I think now they can really focus on what's important. And that's just like, all right, let's finish the season correctly and get into the postseason. Let's get this home first round by and call it a day. I know that's not what you want to hear, but I, I believe it needed to happen. It would have been nice. Hey, I'm to, sure. Who would make want history to, <laughs> to be that team? That goes undefeated all the way through regular and postseason. It would have you know been how hard that shit is, though. I mean, the easiest the the, the Patriot had it easy because you had uh you had Moss who was fucking still in his prime at that time, and you had Brady who was. I mean, tell that to the Raiders. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, he 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 played <laughs> possum on the Raiders so sure. well. He sure the fuck did. I mean, he looked burnt out. He gets and he gets to the page. And he and he's the fucking record for touchdowns in a season on the page. <laughs> Get out of here, dude. That was hilarious. He was like, he was he pulled an Antonio Brown. He forces way out of oh, he forces way out of Oakland at the time. And then he I'm goes to the pages and he's fucking rejuvenated. Oh, yeah, I do remember how to play now. Yeah, I still got speed. <laughs> yeah, no, that, was, that was a bad look. That was a bad look for him. Bad, bad look for him. But um, I think, I think, I think that it. They should be happy that they lost, and now they can focus on what's actually important. Now it's like making sure we continue to play good football and get the first round by. Because if you, you want you want the playoffs to come through Philly, because I personally would rather not play in Philly. In January, right at all, right. period. Just no fucking way. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't. I don't think it's the end, but I think they got they got a wake up call. No, this is exactly the type of game that you want to be your your tarnish. You want this to be the blemish because if they had just like straight up from the first quarter on got their asses handed to them. That would have been fucking embarrassing. Terrible. Uh, This is the kind of win where you can point to and be like, okay, if not for this, if not for that, like the Eagles definitely win this game. Oh, yeah. There was a couple bad ass. There was a couple bad fucking calls that was missed. A face mask, the bullshit roughing the passer at the end of the game. Taylor Hine, I've never wanted to punch a guy in the face so much after I saw that. I wanted to punch Taylor. If I was, I probably would have went to jail. If I was at that game, because I'd have probably ran on a Philly punched him in his face. Because you, 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 no, no, you're not gonna celebrate this, my guy. You're not gonna celebrate this. You're not gonna celebrate this like you just got the first down on your own. No. Yeah. That, so that was gay as hell, and we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> and by gay, I don't mean homosexual gay. That was just lame gay. But uh, as far as actual fair criticisms of the Eagles. The defense was not up to par. You know, they gave up, you know, the runs as usual that has been without Jordan Davis on the field. The runs were, you know, four or five yards at a time. These backs are just slicing through. And then Terry McLaurin had a pretty big night. I mean, you see there, 100, you know, I think 50. Yeah, 128. Yeah, 128 yards. I mean, he was just finding holes. 
making big plays. I mean, so the defense is not perfect by any means, and I'm not expecting perfection, but if you're going to make should be mean, coming back soon, right? Yeah, if you want them to be the big, bad, mean, green machine, then they, they got to play better than that. I th- and I think wasn't because they said he was out for like what four weeks with the ankle. Who's that? Jordan Davis. Oh yeah, yeah. So he'll be gone, you know, a few more weeks. Jeez. Yeah, so, free- yeah, because Fletcher Cox, he's not that guy. He he's not the guy he used to be. He still he still can give you problems, but Jordan Davis is his replacement for sure. Right. Yeah. Jordan Davis is huge for run defense. So they need to figure that out. Uh, and then the other critique I would say is, although, I mean, Hertz was on fire. The passing game was working, mm-hmm. but they they did lean a lot into the pass. I don't think it was very balanced as far as the run goes, but I'm not going to critique that too much because the pass was working. So I don't, you know, I'm not going to see it. a fumble. It was a deep pass. Receiver catches it. And then he fumbles it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now that for sure. Now that's an actual like. Goddard fumbled, so that's a real thing. And then Quez Watkins fumbled. Eh, eh, Goddard fumble was bullshit. It shouldn't have been a fumble. It was a, like he got pulled down by his face mask. And if they call that face mask, the fumble was negated. That that fumble was that fumble was. I, I feel like that's an asterisk next to that fumble. Yeah. So uh, so those are t- yeah. I, it wasn't like the Eagles got the game stolen from them, but. That game, the play we're talking about, where you know there's like a minute 30 left and a third and something, the Eagles need a big stop. It's not even at the the 50 yard mark. You know, the Eagles could definitely, they're still in this game if they get the stop. Taylor Heineke takes the snap, he's rushing around, and then finally, when the Eagles are closing in on him, when it looks like you're gonna have to take the sack, instead of just falling down like a, a noble Manning brother would do just fall down. He takes a fucking knee, and so then when the Eagles do hit him, they get a personal foul, and it gives the Commanders. Of course, they're not the Redskins anymore or the football team. Yeah. They give the Commanders a first down, and that's how they get their win. And it's like you can have it. That's what I told Nate to start off the whole show. You can have it. Yeah, you can fucking have it because that's one of those. That's this. That's gonna be one of those games they're gonna look back and like, uh, okay, if they if they lose two if they lose two or three games, this is gonna be one of those games they not, they're not gonna really pay too much attention to. But and it's, uh, I, I still think they got a chance to make it as to at least I'm I I'm gonna say they're gonna cut they I'm saying they're gonna represent the NFC the NFC this year in the Super Bowl. That's my pick and. I think well we we I don't there's nothing to think about. They are better than the Vikings. Shit. They played the Vikings already. Oh Bears, okay. Yeah, we got the fucking Bears. So so Green Bay and Tennessee, we're gonna see how hey, we're gonna see if they get the bounce back. We're gonna see if Green Bay really if that game against Dallas wasn't a fluke. Yes, yeah, so this Thursday night, um Nate's reading is the uh that's going to be the Amazon Prime TNF game. Packers hosting the Titans. Uh, and yeah, just to real put a bow on that Eagles thing really quick. I I do I like that that's their loss. I like that that's going to be a chip on their shoulder. They know they got fucked in that game. It wasn't just they got dragged through the mud the whole game and got their asses handed to them. You know, it's a controversial thing, and and they're going to use that later for sure. Uh, so going on to this week. Uh, TNF Packers v Titans, and then you Titans know that one. Titans definitely gonna take that one. The Green okay. Bay's run defense, their 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 run defense is bad. So, so you think it's gonna be I King Henry? Gonna have a night. Nice. He's almost at a thousand yards already. Holy shit! Yeah. So I think I think Derrick Henry is gonna have a he's gonna have a night. Two hundred carries already. Wow. Um, Falcons at home against the Bears Sunday. Feeling good about that? No, I'm gonna take the Bears. Damn. Okay. Uh, I, I got to. You look how they've been playing the last couple weeks. Justin Fields has. We tend to have problems against mobile quarterbacks, so I, I got to be honest with myself. Like I don't see us beat Chicago. If we beat Chicago, I'm gonna be fucking ecstatic. But I, I don't. I, I don't see us beating Chicago at this point. 
Wow, Justin Fields himself almost has 800 yards rushing. He's got exactly. So I, right I, I don't, I don't see us beating Chicago at this point. Bills host the Browns. Got to feel good about that. Be, I think that's going to be a squash match. And they're saying it's supposed to be a blizzard. Um, I, I think the Bills are going to be irritated, extremely irritated, and it's yeah. not going to look good for the Browns. Seven touchdowns for Diggs. I like that. Um, you know, just a guy who normally doesn't get a lot of touchdowns. So that's cool. Colts hosting the Eagles. Obviously, that's I like the Eagles. Eagles. Je- Eagles. Je- Jeff Saturday is going to learn a really valuable lesson. And hey, you could have stayed as an analyst. Now you got to deal with the stresses of a head coach. However, <laughs> I think he did the right thing putting Matt Ryan back at See, quarterback. However, uh, yeah, yeah, because Sam Ellinger was not looking any better. Matty Ice was, did not deserve the bench. Not really. And I think that's why he unbenched him because uh, Frank Wright just – I think Frank Wright really didn't want him, to be honest. What a weird – what a weird – what are they doing in India? I mean, ever since Andrew Luck, it's like – you know, give me Jacoby Brissett, give me Philip Rivers, give me Carson Wentz, give me Matt. Like, yeah, they they're yeah. not like they're, they're instead of like taking that chance and like saying fuck it, let's rebuild. They're trying to find is they're trying to find they're trying to strike gold with these veterans. And like, dude, the, most of the veterans you're getting are well past their prime. Matt Ryan, oh. shit. They they feel like they have the team. You know, they feel like they have that team that all it takes is a quarterback. So they're trying to get that bridge quarterback. And you barely got you barely got a way props to Frank Reich. Yeah, yeah. Michael Pittman is okay. Right. Uh Alec Pierce is he he's still a he's rookie. He's still gotta take some time. And you gotta get Jonathan Tiller back. So we'll figure that out. But uh Philly's favorite six and a half, so that'll be interesting. That's game. definitely yeah, uh, definitely on Philly. Jets, Jets. In this game, Patriots and Jets, uh, they're both coming off a bye week. Um, Zach will the only thing that I'm going to say is going to prevent the Jets from making the postseason, or if they do make the postseason, actually winning is Zach Wilson because it's we're week what 11. He has 90, he's 96 for 167 for 1200 yards and four touchdowns. That you can't be a quarterback doing that. You, who who the fuck are you? you? You can't do shit with that. Listen, they have a. I was very wrong about how they would end up the season. I thought they'd be one of the bottom five teams. I most definitely believe that. So that's that my defense. humble. You know, I was wrong. I still feel right about this. Zach Wilson will never win a postseason game. Mm-mm. It, that defense, man. That defense is. That defense is. They're gritty and like it's you don't want to play that. And Matt and Mac Jones is gonna find that out the hard way on Sunday. Zach Wilson makes flash in the pan throws and yep. that's it. That's it. Uh I'm taking the Saints in this game. I'm not there's no con the Saints. No, I'm not. I, I don't see that I don't see this playing out any other way than the Saints winning this game. By the way, in that last game, the Patriots at home against the Jets, the Patriots are favored by three and an over-under of 38 and a half. So, yikes. Uh, same for this game, 38 and a half. So, two very yeah. low-scoring games. Yeah, you're looking at it to be two boring-ass games. Yeah. Oh, man. Down here, Lions. we've got the Giants hosting the Lions. Lions won back-to-back. Lions won back-to-back. Um I don't take the Giants. I got to take the Giants in that one. I, I believe the Giants can can beat them, move to 8-2, and two, and they have to keep pace with their Eagles. They have to. I can't imagine, dude. <laughs> Blows my mind. Blows my mind where we are right now. <laughs> Fucking Christ. This is the Ravens. Especially the Giants. Everyone thought they were coming into this season with Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Toney. As their top two receivers. Yeah, and, neither one of them panned out. Yeah. It's just, what a season. Kenny Galladay has been on the bench. <laughs> and they paid him all that money. There is Tony in his second NFL season, currently with another team. Yep. 
Um, I, I, I take the Ravens in this one. I don't, I don't yeah. see. How about that line? Baltimore favored by twelve. Yeah, that, that, yeah. They, this, uh, I expect it to be that. I expect Baltimore to have a, a field day with the Panthers. If I Mark, think I think Mark Andrews should be healthy. I think the Cowboys were favored by eleven against the Packers last week. So, <laughs> I guess we'll see how if this one turns out. Cover. <laughs> oh, this is this is a game that nobody wants to watch. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Nobody wants to watch this game. Uh, what, time is, what time is this game for? The the idea that this even has an over under more so than those other games is hilarious. <laughs> this nobody. is going to be the worst game of all season. Hey, you know what the shittiest thing is? The red zone is probably going to be sticking to this game more than any other fucking game. This will be worse than the first Thursday night football game of the season. I can't remember what that was, but I... It was awful. Dear God, we've got the 1-7-1. One, and one. Houston Texans hosting the 5-5 five and five Washington Commanders, the Commies. And you saw how they just won their fucking last game. Jesus. This game is going to be awful. Wow, dude. Here's I another one. Wait. I can't wait to watch Davis Mills <laughs> battle it out with Taylor <laughs> Heineke. And Ron Rivera said he hasn't chosen to start in QB yet. So, yeah. This shit here. Uh, We've got Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos taking uh, on division rival two and seven Las Vegas Raiders. Denver favored by two and a half. I don't even know who the fuck to pick in this game. Do I pick the Raiders? But I don't trust the Raiders. The nah, Broncos, the offense Broncos. Is, the Broncos are shit. Take the Broncos. You think? Here's a game. This is going to be the game of the week. I am a, uh, you know, it seems like once, at least once a year, I become a big Kirk Cousins fan. And here's the big time for me this year. All right. As long as it's not in prime time, we're good. How about that? Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Dallas Cowboys 425 p.m. 525 Central Time. That's going to be a hell of a game. I'm thinking this. I'm, I, I got to take the Vikings in this because the Cowboys. Dak is horrible and horrible on third and fourth downs on making throws. And I think Vikings defense thrives at the most. Um, CD's probably going to have a game. Huh? I was just saying we got an over under of 47 and a half and Dallas is favored by a single point in Minnesota. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I really don't. The Bengals uh, coming off their bye, taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. This is an Cincinnati favored by four and This a half. is a really unfortunate game. Because remember happened week one, TJ Watt dominated the fucking Bengals. And he's fresh off his injury. Coming back, it, it's it's looking like that. It might turn into the and that uh, Bengals offensive line has not improved. Oh my god, <laughs> they have not improved. I think Burrow is like the third most sack quarterback. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he definitely is. I, I think that this game is going to play out the way it should play out, and it's it, it's going to be a bad day for the Bengals. You like Pittsburgh? I do. I, I like Pittsburgh. Um, Kenny Pickett is going to have to play smart. They're going to have to do things. They're going to they're going to have to make him comfortable. Yeah, they're going to have to. Najee's going to have to fucking. I'm hearing a lot of people saying they they they're starting to look at Najee as a bust. I don't know. I think it's injuries. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Then we got the Sunday night game, Chargers again Sunday night. How about that? Back to back. Chargers and Chiefs. I mean, it was a good game the first time they played on Thursday night. Um, Highest over under of all week, 50. I, Kansas favored by six and a half. Um, if Keenan Allen and Mike Williams play, it's going to be a close game. If they don't, the Chiefs are going to have a field day. And then wrapping it up. I need to get an Amazon to um, check out their in-season hard knocks for the Cardinals. This is bullshit. 
What? Well, who, Monday night? I mean, no one really one watched. Going down in Mexico. Uh, the Cardinals are gonna lose this game. It's just it's just that simple. These are this is a uh, this is, NFL knows what they're doing because these are two teams with strong fan bases in Mexico. Monday night game. I mean, I mean, it's gonna be a competitive game. Don't get me wrong, but I, I don't see it playing out any different than the, the Niners beating, especially on neutral territory. Yeah, if Kyler's out again, I I would definitely favor the Niners. And right now, you would have to imagine with the line the way it is, San Francisco is favored by eight. You got to imagine Kyler's going to be out again. Yeah, it's, it's, I think he's out. I think he, he has a hamstring injury, so. You never it know. Seems, with that kind of line, anyway, it seems like right now they're assuming Kyler's out. So we'll see. He might. I think he might be out. So we'll, we'll have to see. Oh, man. Nate, this is our longest show yet. Right? For those of you who missed it, the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump, has announced he will be running again in 2024. <laughs> That's right, folks. Biden, Trump, all over again. You asked for it, you're getting it. Maybe you didn't ask for it. You're getting that anyway. We talked a little bit about UVA and the tragedy there. Man, I hope, I hope all this nonsensical violence can. I don't know. I can say what I want to hope, but as long as, you know. How about be there for your friends? How about if you notice someone who has an issue, you know. Yep, reach out. Do what you can. That's never Never going to be an easy one, dude. That's a very nuanced conversation that's never going to be black and white. Apparently, Russian missiles... And I've been fired in Poland, so we'll see what happens there. <laughs> if we know anything about world wars, that you better stay out of Poland. But Sean Watson's practicing, he'll be back. But I don't know if you finally lost the game. And I'm ready to go to bed. Yes, sir. That's a Nate, good time. parting words for the MFers. You better subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I- Good night, everyone.